funding the operations of House committees. Senior Republicans and Democrats testified about their funding needs. Ohio Republican Bob Ney chaired the hearing. It's just under three hours. Second day of uh, request of the committees of the U.S. House. Again, we'll be having several panels of members uh, testifying. I just wanted to mention the, the procedure. The chairman and ranking minority member of each committee will come uh, before the committee and present their budget request for the 107th Congress. The chairman and the ranking minority member will each have five minutes to testify. Many on House administration members will then have five minutes each to question the uh, presiding chairman and ranking minority member. I just wanted to say, uh, just in a brief opening statement, uh, this is the second round of, of these hearings. Uh, I think we had uh, very good hearings uh, the other day, and I expect today to be uh, no different. This committee, House administration, does divide its money two-third, one-third. Uh, this was a standard set uh, through Speaker Gingrich, uh, Chairman Thomas, Speaker Hastert, and also uh, myself. So we're sharing those those resources. And with that, I'll defer to uh, uh, a gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Hoyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, appreciate uh, you giving me this opportunity. Uh, and I'm pleased to be at this hearing to hear our balance of our committees discuss their funding requests. Mr. Chairman, I particularly want to thank you for your leadership and commitment uh, to trying to reach agreement uh, prior to the action of this committee in all of our committees on the fair distribution of resources and personnel to carry out the uh, responsibilities that both the majority have and the minority have and the committee has as a whole. As a result of your leadership, Mr. Chairman, a potentially divisive and I think polarizing issue I think is, is going to be diffused. And uh, without you, I think that would not have occurred. And I think the institution owes you a, a debt of gratitude for that. In a short while, I believe we'll hear from the Government Reform and Oversight Committee Chairman and the ranking minority member that they have been able to address a serious six-year lap in, lapse in the application of the one-third uh, objective. Although the proposed solution of, is not perfect, I suppose, from either perspective, it does represent a significant break from past practices. Furthermore, it shows what genuine leadership can achieve despite the obstacles. I mentioned you, Mr. Chairman, of course, uh, and you've been critical in this, but I also want to indicate that Speaker Hastert has also himself been committed to this objective, to working fairly, and I think without him, and I think we would have both agree that without him that would not have been possible. In addition, I know we continue to work on solutions in several other problems areas. As we proceed through the hearing process this morning, we on the minority side are grateful that you and Speaker Hester have finally broken the glass ceiling on minority funding and staffing on certain committees. I am confident that during the negotiation process over the amount that this committee will recommend for each committee during the 107th Congress, we will be equal partners in fashioning a resolution that achieves minority fairness, ensures operational efficiency, enhances the legislative process, and that we all and support. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Chairman, in the spirit of genuine bipartisanship, which you have been building on this committee. I said that at our first hearing. I want to reiterate it. Uh, we had the opportunity to talk uh, uh, yesterday about some hearings that you want to conduct in a timely fashion on, on uh, a number of issues related to elections, which I think are critical. It is a pleasure to work with you, and I thank you for your leadership on this committee and look forward to hearing our very, very distinguished uh, a panelist uh, from the International Relations Committee. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank, uh, thank you. I want to thank the gentleman for his comments. It's a, it's a two-way street. We couldn't have got there without uh, you and, and your staff, and I mean that. And it's been a tremendous working relationship. With that, we'll call uh, uh, Chairman uh, Hyde and Ranking Minority Member Lantos of the International Relations Committee. I would also offer, if you're going to troubled spots in the world, you may take this team here with you. Maybe we can help you out on a couple places. <laughs> Thank you. Chairman Hyde. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and Mr. Hoyer, uh, I want to thank you for 
devoting your considerable talents to this unglamorous but essential function of the operation of this institution. It's very important, and uh, we thank you for giving it your enthusiasm. Before I forget, I want to pay public tribute to Shelley Livingston uh, of our staff, who is retiring. This is her last time preparing chairmen uh, such as myself for presentations before this committee, um, a role she has performed exceedingly well for the past two decades. And we will miss her. It's uh, interesting that her last preparation was her most challenging. <laughs> but thank you very much. And what a pleasure Mr. it is Chairman, to Mr. Chairman, can I interject a question? Yes, sir. Uh, I take it, you know, we're subject to all the laws and regulation now under the Responsibility Act, Government Responsibility Act. Uh, I presume there has not been a child labor uh, law uh, <laughs> violation made against us. Uh, obviously, she was hired uh, in her very early, early teens if she's been here that long. A more lawless era, I might add, Thank Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> I'd also note Shelley looks a little too happy today, so I just thought I'd note that. Thank you, Chair. And I want to also uh, say to you what a pleasure it is to work with Mr. Lantos as the ranking minority member. Uh, it is uh, an educational and rewarding experience. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and, uh, and Mr. Lantos for uh, giving Tom, I'm, I'm Mr. Hoyer, for giving Tom Lantos and me the opportunity to present our budget request for the 107th Congress. Our relationship with other countries are as important, and some of us believe more important, now as they were in 1790 when Ben Franklin sat as chairman of this committee. The world has become globalized, and the U.S. is a very much a part of that globalization. The decisions we make with respect to our policy and involvement toward other countries are as important as any decisions Congress makes. Congress's impact on and the sh and shaping of foreign policy is done through the International Relations Committee. We not only oversee and authorize funding for the operations of the Department of State, we have legislative and oversight jurisdiction for foreign assistance, the United Nations export policy, sanctions measures, including curtailing the threat of weapons of mass destruction. To do the job we think we can do and what we believe is expected of us by the Congress and the people, we need the staff and an adequate budget to support the committee's initiatives. That's why we're here today asking for your support. Our request for the 107th Congress is $14,495,256. This request represents $3,181,725 more, or a 28.1% increase over budget authority in the last Congress, 106. Of the total requests for of the 107th, 93.3% represent staff salaries. Specifically, the committee has three unique personnel requirements. One, a sixth subcommittee whose jurisdiction covers a wide and volatile region of the world, the Middle East and South Asia, and two new oversight responsibilities at the full committee level, and three parliamentary activities and receipt of distinguished visitors, activities unique to the House International Relations Committee carried out by existing staff and existing budget. In addition to year-end financial and conference reports, all arrangements for these meetings, including logistics protocol, financial accounting, and compilation of background materials are carried out by our committee staff. The Senate has a separate office to handle these functions with an annual budget of $180,000 for salaries and additional funds for operating expenses provided by the Secretary of the Senate. I'm pleased to note that this budget request provides fully one-third of the budget for salaries and one-third of the staff, excluding shared administrative staff, for the minority. The 2001 total budget request of $7,003,845 represents an increase of $1,325,314, or 23.3%, over the 2000 total allocation. Of this amount, staff salaries increase is $1,155,000, mm -hmm. or 87% of the total increase over 2000. 
745,000 or 64.5 percent of this amount is for nine new staff positions. If the $745,000 were eliminated, the salary increase would be a very modest 7.7 percent. Six of these new positions, representing $500,000 in new salary money, account for 43.3 percent of the total salary increase. These six positions were effectively created when the leadership in, and the House Rules Package for the 107th Congress granted our committee a sixth subcommittee in order for it to fill a jurisdictional void in the global areas of the Middle East and South Asia. Practically, however, as is done with all our subcommittees, an additional new full committee position is added both on the Republican and Democratic staff to act as liaison with the new subcommittee. So in reality, the creation of the sixth subcommittee requires six of the nine new slots, representing 67 percent of the total increase for new slots. Absent the funding request for these six slots, the salary increase over last year would be um, only 12.3 percent. The additional, the additional three slots will ensure adequate oversight at both the majority and minority full committee level of areas such as trade and export policy and U.S. Department of State activities, which once fell under the jurisdiction of former subcommittees. My intention is to emphasize oversight more than in the past. Billions and billions of dollars are dispersed through a maze of programs, some justified, some not. Particularly when you consider foreign aid, the question arises, who is minding the store? I hope to take a look with the GAO at how effectively these programs are operating and where savings can be made or more emphasis applied. To do this vital job will require top flight personnel and salaries. It's my hope and expectation that the results will more than justify the expenditures. Let me also hasten to add that of the nine new slots, four slots are designated for the minority, which will give them one-third of the staffing slots. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman and other members of the committee, let me stress that we believe that our request provides us with the necessary resources to effectively carry out our oversight and legislative responsibilities. Our jurisdiction spans across the Department of State, Department of Defense, Department of Commerce, and numerous smaller agencies numbering over 100,000 personnel, as well as over 300 billion in resources. We need adequate funding to compete with these agencies and to do our job. My experience has been that when we have wanted to retain on a permanent basis any detailees or fellows from agencies, we haven't been able to do so. We can't match the salaries. This is unfortunate and um, it's something that we hope can be rectified. What, one last comment. I had no idea, and I've been on this committee since 1982, I had no idea of the social obligations, visiting ministers of finance, of uh, uh, f foreign policy. We had three yesterday. They come in, you have a formal meeting with them, you have uh, food and beverages set up, and you go through a ritual and everybody asks questions. Um, and it's one after the other after the other. We have had 70 requests so far this Congress, and uh, you can't snub them. You have to, you have to give them uh, comity, and uh, Mr. Lantos is there with me, thank God. Uh, but it is, uh, it's formidable. So uh, we need the personnel and the help. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hyde. Ranking Member Lantos, welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hoyer, it's a pleasure to appear before you particularly with my friend Chairman Hyde, and let me publicly pay tribute to the truly bipartisan spirit in which uh, he and his staff have approached our uh, very complex and interesting assignment. I know that at the outset, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, uh, Mr. Hyde referred to your assignment as unglamorous. It may be unglamorous, but it is pregnant with power. And I think that the, the record should show that, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I also want to associate myself with, um, with um, Mr. Hyde's comments time. concerning Shelley Livingston and, and pay my tribute to her um, uh, superb service over the years. 
Um, when Larry Eagleburger, uh, upon becoming Secretary of State, indicated that we will have an increasingly more difficult assignment in the international arena following the implosion of the Soviet Union, not many realized how prophetic and how wise his observations were. It is a much less dangerous world, perhaps, because we are not facing a nuclear-equipped Soviet Union um, and the Warsaw Pact, but it is infinitely more complex. And as Henry and I are discovering, it is unbelievably time-consuming. And uh, I would merely like to say, from the point of view of the democratic side, that we fully support Chairman Hyde's request. Uh, he has been meticulously careful and, uh, and considerate of all of our requests, and uh, um, we are in full accord with all of his recommendations. There is one issue which uh, we both feel very strongly about, and that is space. Uh, and um, we have an internal reallocation problem that I know the chairman will handle uh, between the current uh, existing space that we have because it's an inequitable distribution at the moment, but we are asking your help for giving our committee additional space in Rayburn. We cannot operate out of the Ford building. It, it's, we, we have constant negotiations, meetings, working with our staff, and uh, it's simply not a viable arrangement to have some of our staff located uh, as far away as the Ford building. Um, I know that, that the chairman referred to our working to that together as a rewarding and educational experience. I accept the concept of it being rewarding. I'd like him to explain what education is. <laughs> I'm learning a lot from you, Tom. <laughs> and I want to thank you for your time and attention. I have a, a very off-the-wall suggestion, but nonetheless sincere. Tom has told you about our space problems, and we really do have them. When I was chairman of the judiciary, I didn't know what a w wonderful setup that was uh, with space, because there was plenty of space for the staff. Not so with international relations. We are divided. We, it looks like a it looks like a motel in downtown Tokyo. I mean, the little little rooms and and uh, not enough space. Um, some in the garage. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, we expect to have some asphyxiation cases from the fumes from the garage. So we really need more space, and we'll bring that up at a perhaps a more appropriate time. But I don't think it's too visionary to suggest that maybe we need another building, and maybe the old Congressional Hotel could be torn down and another building there. The Senate has three office buildings, 100 senators. We have three that are overutilized with 435. And uh, maybe we ought to think about it. We can call it the Hoyer Building, if that's what it takes. If that's what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would note that, uh, you know, with, with technology and uh, more American citizens, thank goodness, than ever before, and people from around the world are able to find out what's going in the, on in the U.S. House. They don't have to necessarily be able to get in their cars or fly here to find out. Like not everybody can do that. Now, having said that, it reaches out more information, more communication, more people are involved than ever before in this country's history. When you get them involved, however, they make phone calls and visits and write letters and want things done for the interests of, of our country and for the interests of the world. Uh, that leads to you know, additional needs of these committees in order to just satisfy, as they should, the constituency of this country, which leads to a space problem. And our staffs have began initial communications, and we need to look at a, a short-term type of solution, I think, and a long-term fix looking at all of the space that we have and how it's allocated. So I, I assure you this committee, working with Mr. Hoyer, we're going to embark on that once we get all these budgets done. Thank you. That's Mr. Reassuring. Hoyer, do you have a question? Of well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have, uh, first of all, I want to make an observation. I agree with Chairman Hyde and uh, with Ranking Member Lentos that uh, in many ways the responsibility of this committee is much more complex than it was prior to 1990. Uh, 
the bipolar world was frankly a much simpler world. It may have been a more dangerous world, but it was uh, as well a simpler world. It is now a much more complex uh, problem that confronts both our intelligence communities and the International Relations Committee. So I agree fully with the chairman that the demands on the committee have really risen. Secondly, Mr. Chairman, as you know, I observed that the enthusiasm of the new majority in 1995 uh, was to downsize, to cut spending. I think we have affected some uh, significant efficiencies within the ministerial realm of running the House. I think we've gotten our finances under control. Uh, I think they are much more transparent to the public. I think much more transparent to members and managed uh, uh, much more effectively than they were pr prior to uh, 1994. Uh, and I think that's to be congratulated. But I think in the zeal of the new majority to affect its uh, cutting, uh, frankly, we cut too far. Uh, we, we do not now have the capacity to oversee a $1.567 trillion executive department. Uh, or the multiple responsibilities around the world that the United States has uh, and cannot uh, uh, elude, nor, in my opinion, should it. We are blessed, I think, with having two new leaders on that committee. They've been on the committee for a long period of time, so it's not, they're not inexperienced, but they are new in the sense that they have just uh, taken on their particular responsibilities in this Congress. They are both extraordinarily able. I've had the privilege and pleasure of working with both of them. They are knowledgeable and effective leaders. Uh, the country will be well served, and in my opinion, the international community will be well served by their leadership. Which is to say, Mr. Chairman, that the request, although on its face a substantial increase, uh, as the Chairman pointed out, with the uh, added complexity which continues of the Middle East, which is the subcommittee which has been newly created, uh, that subcommittee in and of itself will require a substantial portion, as the Chairman has pointed out, of this uh, request. So, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Lantos, uh, I understand on this side, for, for my colleagues, the, the needs that you have, and we'll certainly try to work with Mr. Ney in responding to those needs as well as we can. Lastly, uh, Mr. Lantos and Mr. Hyde have brought up a critical need of every committee. Now, uh, Mr. Sensenbrenner is not here. Uh, perhaps we'll question him if he has excess space <laughs> as a result of <laughs> former Chairman Hyde's observation. Uh, I truly appreciate that very much. I hope I'm not in the room when you suggest <laughs> I, I, I understand that. But the fact of the matter is uh, we built the Rayburn Building, and it was completed, I think, in 61 or 62, somebody will correct me, in that era, at least. I know because I was in college here when they were building, and it was somewhat controversial. Uh, that was uh, four decades ago. We have just completed the census showing that we have 275 million or 280 million people in America. At that point in time, I believe we probably had at least 50 or 60 or 70 million less uh, people. Members of Congress have the same numbers, although we are representing substantially more people. Our staffs have been frozen, at least since I've been here. We have gotten no additional slots. Uh, and the committees are essentially in the same position they were in. Uh, and so I think, Mr. Hyde, your suggestion is not uh, specious at all. Uh, I think we may have some engineering problems with the location that the old hotel and the Ford building is located on. Not the Ford building, but the, uh, what's, what's it called? Neal. The Neal. O'Neill building. Uh, how could I forget that? Uh, the uh, O'Neill building may have structural problems, but clearly our responsibilities and the growth of America, if nothing else, and the numbers we are serving would, I think, call upon us to look at what alternatives are possible so that we do not have highly professional, highly uh, educated uh, people dealing with complex issues sitting on top of one another almost literally. Uh, it is not a situation that is 
conducive to good uh, good work and recruiting and retaining the kind of quality people that we need to do this work so i thank the chairman uh, and the ranking member for their observations it's very high up on our priority we've dealt with resources and slots uh, but as we do so we also need to uh, recognize the uh, concomitant uh, need for space to accommodate that those slots and that uh, those resources thank you thank you would you care to advise Mr. Sensen Bernard of the reallocation of space that uh, <laughs> we'll wait till Mr. Hyde uh, leaves the room and then we'll do that uh, I have one quick one quick question if I could and I'll make a brief because I don't want to back up the hearing uh, if in fact we can get and I've asked this of every single panel uh, if in fact we can get to to one-third of satisfaction on every single committee uh, I always ask to ranking members, do you think then we would have the actual vote support uh, for a budget? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question sure. of the chairman? Uh, as you know, Henry, you and I have discussed this briefly, but as you know, it's generally been discussed on the allocation that was suggested by the Republicans when they were in the minority. Uh, we have been pursuing that for six years. It looks like we're going to accomplish it this year, which I think is excellent. If, however, we should have to cut back on your request, and, and others as well, not just yours, but uh, other requests, uh, would it be your intention to still pursue with the resources available, the distribution as suggested of the two-thirds, one-third? Yes. Thank you, Absolutely. sir. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Appreciate very much. it. Thank you. Next, we'll go to the Government Reform Committee. We have uh, Chairman uh, Burton and Ranking Member uh, Waxman. Thank you for coming before the panel. We'll begin with uh, Chairman Burton. Thank you, uh, Chairman Nay and uh, Mr. Hoyer. And my good friend, Mr. Doolittle and Mr. Reynolds. Uh, I will submit my statement for the record and briefly summarize if I can. Uh, we've asked for a 6% increase this year and a 4% increase for next year. That's an average of 5% a year. And we haven't padded it. We think it's reasonable and, and we'd like for you to support it and not consider cutting it. Uh, you all have the numbers we submitted, so I'm, I'll not go into the details, but I, I want to talk to you just a little bit about our committee and the work that we've been doing. We held 250 hearings in the last Congress. I think that's substantially more than just about any other. We reported 90 bills to the House floor, and we got several uh, good nuts and bolts management bills enacted. Some of our work's been well covered by the media, as you know. Uh, the campaign fundraising investigation, I'm sure you're familiar with that. I'm sure you're familiar with the White House email issue. But we did a lot of other work as well uh, that I think needs to be recognized. We've investigated safety problems with our childhood vaccines. For example, some of you may be aware that uh, many childhood vaccines contain mercury additives. And you may not know that your vaccine that you received uh, uh, for uh, uh, the flu vaccine at the doctor's office con contains mercury. And I think all of you ought to know that because there's a lot of questions about whether mercury causes problems neurologically uh, in later life. And mercury is poisonous, as you know. What impact does this have on our adult population and our children? Nobody knows for sure, but we've been holding hearings on it. We've held hearings on the explosion of autism among our young children. Uh, the rates on autism has gone from uh, 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 500 nationwide. We have an explosion in that area, and that's one of the things we're working on. We've held hearings on the energy crisis that's hitting every region of the country, and we have three more scheduled very shortly. These are issues that have been neglected for a long time, uh, but we've been working on them. Uh, some of the other hearings uh, that we're doing are also very important. We start, we're, we're about to start uh, uh, hearings into racial profiling. That's a very important issue among some of the minorities in our country. And we're going to examine the high billing uh, rate uh, errors uh, that taxpayers are having to pay for every year. So we've got a lot uh, that's on our plate. Now, everyone recognizes how important oversight is. And I, I'm sure some of you have been to uh, meetings with the majority leader, and, and uh, he's talked to us 
about the need for every single committee to have oversight hearings. During the uh, 106th Congress, we produced 11 investigative reports. This is what we did, 11. And I hope you'll pay particular attention to this because they changed the name of our committee from the uh, Government Reform and Oversight Committee to the Government Reform Committee because they wanted all committees to do oversight. And the leadership has been beating on us for this for some time. This is what we've done, and this is what every other committee in Congress has done on oversight. Our one committee has done so much more than all the other committees combined in the area of oversight, and uh, we've done it with, uh, with uh, a great deal of zeal. Uh, our investigations cover everything from the uh, Justice Department to the President's clemency decisions to the anthrax vaccine and to financial management of uh, federal agencies. Writing these reports is a huge project, and our staff has worked very, very hard on this. Uh, as I said, I brought with me the other reports from the other 16 committees, and uh, you can see the difference. Now I want to talk to you real briefly about the majority-minority allocations. When we were in the uh, minority, the most we ever received was around 20 percent. And uh, leadership has been telling us for a long time they wanted to get us to one-third for the minority and two-thirds for the majority. Uh, we set a goal to do that, and we believe we're going to uh, reach that goal. With the budget we're talking about, uh, I think we can get that done this year. Mr. Waxman uh, has been very cooperative in this process, and we worked out a transition period so we can turn over the last couple of slots as they become available through attrition. And Henry, I really appreciate your working with us on that. Uh, I feel like we've been over backwards to make that happen, and I hope we get some recognition for how far we've come. Uh, and I'd like to say to my colleagues on the Democrat side, uh, Mr. Horrier and all the Democrats, that uh, we've worked very hard to get this done, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, you'll support our budget because we are striving and will achieve that uh, two-thirds, one-third split that you've asked for. Now, the last thing I'd like to say is we haven't padded our budget. Uh, we've, we've worked very, very hard the last couple of years. We've had tons of hearings. A lot of legislation has reached the floor and passed, and we have not padded our budget. A lot of my colleagues have asked for 30 and 40 percent increases. We've asked for 6 percent one year and 5 and 4 percent the next, an average of 5 percent. We think that's very reasonable, and we sincerely hope that you won't cut what we've asked for. I think if you do, it will make it very difficult for us to achieve the goals that you want us to set. Thank you, With that, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Waxman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hoyer, members of this uh, committee. I am pleased to join with uh, Chairman Burton in support of this budget. Last uh, time and uh, when I came before this committee, I was a harsh uh, critic of the government reform budget because it, in our view, disenfranchised the minority. This Congress, however, the chairman has worked very hard to develop a fair budget. And I want to commend uh, Chairman Burton. And I also want to thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Hoyer, for the very constructive process that all of us were engaged in to uh, resolve the outstanding issues. For the uh, first time, our uh, minority will have a uh, third of the slots and a third of the budget, uh, meeting the principle of two-thirds, one-third. Uh, we have, however, made some accommodations in uh, recognizing that there are some uh, administrative uh, spots that serve both the majority and the minority, so we are dedicating two of our positions for those administrative uh, uh, slots. And then, uh, due to the fact that there is a transition that's going to take place and we don't want uh, to uh, uh, force anybody to lose their job except the, by a, a attrition opening these additional uh, positions, we have agreed with the majority to have uh, two additional slots that will stay with them, our slots that will stay with them for this year so that uh, we can have an orderly transition. Uh, we do have a problem on space. I know every committee is telling you that issue. and. It is a big issue with our committee and as well. Uh, and um, I, I look forward to working with you and the chairman and, and trying to resolve these uh, outstanding issues. But I think we've come a very far way, uh, very far along and, and very uh, close to what uh, we've all said. Uh, the Republicans, when they were in the minority, was the fair thing to do. And now that we're in the minority, argue that it's the fair thing to do, the two-thirds, one-third split. Uh, the bells rang, and uh, so I'll make my question uh, very, very brief. 
therefore, I would take it if all committees of the House can be at two thirds, one thirds to the satisfaction of the, of the minority that it is a two third, one third. Do you believe that there be votes uh, by the minority members of the committee for the proposal on the floor? I do believe that the uh, Democrats will vote for, most Democrats will vote for the committee funding resolution if Mr. Hoyer and overseeing uh, all the Democrats and all the committees see that they were treated fairly. And I think that the, the, the litmus test for that is the two-thirds, one-third. Thank you. Mr. Hoyer. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Henry, for that observation. As I've told the chairman, I'm, I met with all the ranking members, and we discussed this. And for the most part, uh, most ranking members were very positive about the relationship they had with their uh, chairman in working uh, towards the uh, and, and affecting realization of the one-thirds, two-thirds minimum uh, distribution of staff, which the Republicans suggested in, in 93 and which we have uh, been working towards since then. Uh, I want to tell Chairman Burton that I'm pleased that uh, you and Mr. Waxman have been able to reach uh, accommodation on this and that we have accomplished the goal uh, that was set and that Speaker Hastert and Chairman Ney have been so supportive of as well. As you know, Dan, uh, Bill Thomas, from the very first day he chaired this committee, allocated uh, one-third of the slots and one-third of the resources to the minority on this committee. And we spend those as we see fit, as we determine our needs are, uh, without uh, reference to uh, uh, the approval of the majority for those expenditures or for those hirings. Am I correct uh, that, that the understanding that you and uh, Mr. Waxman have reached uh, will, A, provide for the, the with, with the exception of the joint slots, the distribution of slots, one-third, and the distribution of resources, one-third, and that Mr. Waxman will have uh, uh, control uh, over those resources and slots? Yes, I think that's been our policy all along, that the funds that they received they could use as they saw fit, uh, uh, and I don't see any change in that. Well, I want to I thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I know <laughs> Henry is very pleased because we've been working towards this end, and I think this is a very positive result. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Questions? Chairman, Mr. Reynolds? the uh, question I have is in the increase for uh, consultants in the 107th Congress from the 106th, could you just outline maybe some of the issues of, uh, that you look at wh which will require uh, more consultant dollars uh, in your budget? In the past, we've had uh, uh, the need for consultants when we needed uh, technical expertise, and I think the same thing applies here. Uh, we've asked for $100,000 for that, according to my staff, and I, I, I think that will be sufficient. We may not use all of that, but uh, we'd like to have it there just in case we need it. Uh, I'd like to just say one more thing sure. and urge you, Mr. Chairman, I know we have to go vote, and that is that we really haven't padded our budget at all. And if you cut our budget, it's going to make it very difficult for me and for Henry and I to, to, to achieve what we want to achieve as far as the, 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 the proper disposition of our funds. So I really hope that you'll take a close look at this. We haven't asked for a dime more than we really need. Mr. Chairman, just let me follow up on that, Dan, because I want to make sure I hear you. I understand that. And frankly, your uh, request is one of, the, I think, the lower uh, increases that has been requested. Mm -hmm. So I think it is, I, th I, I don't have any doubt, but what you say is absolutely correct. There is no padding on here. Right. Uh, obviously, we had a 3.8 percent uh, salary adjustment right. uh, last year. So that in and of itself would explain a 4 or 5 percent increase uh, without discussing anything else in terms of your responsibilities. Now, some of us may think that you're having too many hearings. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's a judgment call. I understand that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if perchance, and I, don't, I, I hope this doesn't happen with respect to your committee because it's one of the lower requests we have, uh, that it should be a point or two below. Uh, you are still committed, am I correct, to the distribution of one-third, two-thirds. Both of you would well, probably lose something. Yeah, I, I obviously I want to I achieve that goal, but it's going to make it very difficult if, 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 if we're cut because, uh, you know, I talked to my staff and we even talked about the padding this up a little bit so if you cut us, we'd be where we wanted to be. We decided against that and uh, uh, 
the figures that we've given to you anticipates one third, two thirds. If you cut us, uh, I'm going to have to take another look at the whole thing. So yeah, I, I, our goal is the two thirds, one third, and we can do it with the budget <coughs> we've asked for. I've asked that question uh, to all the committee chairs, and the, the response, frankly, I've, Dan, that I've received has been that uh, there would there was an adherence to the one thirds, two thirds. Now I know our ranking members across the board. We're not taking this as just a mathematical. There are obviously discrepancy. Armed Services deals with this differently, as you know, and uh, uh, the Budget Committee and the, and the Agriculture Committee a little bit. Everybody has their own way of doing things. But we want to make sure, Dan, as we consider the budget, that we that, that the principle is one that you adopt, that Henry adopts, right. uh, and so that we can proceed on that basis. See, what Henry just said, and I think he's accurate, uh, we have a problem with, with, with staff, and he's been very willing to work with us in this transition period. The problem is, if, if you cut our budget, that puts the staffing problems in, 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 in a real difficult position, and, and it makes it more difficult for us to, to achieve what Henry and I have agreed to. Uh, and, but I, I do want to do that, and that's our goal. Oh, that's a goal. We've, we've had that as a goal for some period of time. Hopefully that's what we're going to reach. Now, let me say this. Nobody appreciates the issue of... Uh, uh, reduction in forces or transfer more than I do right. uh, the federal as you know we you and I've worked together for 20 years on federal workforce obviously what I hear Henry saying is that he wants to work with you on that because we're not for shoving people out and the we door. appreciate that and that's and I think he will continue to do that but we want to make sure and I know we've got to go vote that the one-third two-thirds is a principle not related to how many resources you get but to the ha the, the fairness of how the resources that you do get will be allocated. I agree with that, but, but we do have a little transition problem, as I said. Mr. Chairman, I, I know we had the vote. I just want to uh, say how pleased I am to hear about the uh, agreement that now brings uh, the Government Reform Committee, a committee that I have spent a considerable number of years on, um, into um, conformance with the Chairman and the ranking member's objective. And I know that the Chairman Burton has been working towards this um, and uh, I'm just happy to see it come to a, a resolution um, in this manner. So it's good to see uh, you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and to uh, uh, Representative Waxman, your ranking member, and um, I'm going to try to make sure that my old committee does not receive any kind of cut um, from you. your, I think, very reasonable budget request. Um, and I know there's a lot of waste, fraud, and abuse that needs to be tracked down in the government and um, that you need the resources to do it. Thank you, Mr. Fatah. Henry and I are now going to go dancing together. I, I want to thank, uh, <laughs> save the last song for us. I want to thank both the members. <laughs> we'll reconvene in 10 minutes with judiciary. Thank you. Any. <laughs> Committee will reconvene. We have uh, Mr. Davis here, and uh, beginning will be uh, Chairman Sensenbrenner. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Davis, and members of the committee. It is my pleasure to appear before you today with Mr. Conyers to present my first budget as Chairman of the Judiciary Committee. The Committee on the Judiciary continues to be one of the most active in the House. In the 106th Congress, this committee was referred to over 15 percent of the total legislative measures introduced in the House. We were responsible for the enactment of 73 public laws and 21 private laws. These statistics understate the complex and controversial issues within the committee's jurisdiction, including constitutional amendments, immigration, crime, bankruptcy reform, and Internet taxation and other intellectual property issues. As you know from my previous budget submissions when I served as chairman of the Science Committee, I am not in the habit of asking for more funding than is necessary to do the job. As science chairman, I asked for increases of less than 3 percent each year. The situation confronting the Judiciary Committee is quite different. 
The proposal before you today requests $15.49 million to meet the committee's needs over the next two years, which is a 27 percent increase over the previous two years. Let me explain why this is necessary. First, the salary levels funded in the last Congress proved to be insufficient to retain and hire qualified professional staff, mostly attorneys, who could often earn more elsewhere. To compensate and to retain this staff, equipment purchases were deferred as these funds were moved in the salary line. To maintain the committee's expertise, I have retained virtually all professional staff and have honored the salary <coughs> commitments of the previous chairman. The budget contains just an 8 percent increase in the salary line for the first session of the 107th Congress over the amount actually expended in the second session of the 106th Congress last year. Second, the equipment line item in this budget request supports our commitment to the Leadership's Electronic Congress Initiative. This request includes funding to upgrade our main hearing room in 2001. More modest upgrades to the remaining two subcommittee hearing rooms would be performed in 2002. Included with these upgrades are the addition of assisted living devices and other ADA compliance issues. These upgrades will enable teleconferencing and multimedia presentations, and in addition, hearings would be broadcast on the web to make Congress's activities even more available to the public. The previously insufficient salary level, combined with deferred equipment and software purchases and upgrade to our hearing rooms, explains the increase requested. During the 106th Congress, the Judiciary Committee totaled 77 staff, both majority and minority. During a meeting with Mr. Conyers shortly after becoming chairman, I offered to increase the minority staff allocation from 20 to 22 slots. Correspondingly, the majority staff would decrease by two slots, as I have not requested an increase in the total number of staff positions authorized. This commitment increased the minority staff ratio to one-third of all staff slots, adjusting for nine nonpartisan administrative positions. I have also allocated one-third of the salary budget to the minority accordingly to be spent as the minority sees fit. This is the first time the Judiciary Committee has achieved a one-third, two-thirds division of either non-administrative salaries or staff slots. Late yesterday, Mr. Conyers raised additional concerns of two of the administrative slots should not be withheld from the one-third, two-third staff division I have previously described. I would like to announce to you that I will be happy to accommodate Mr. Conyers' request. This will result in a reduction of the administrative staff from nine to seven slots, and it would also result in an additional $300,000 over two years of which the minority would receive the customary one-third allocation. This brings the total increase to the minority to three slots. To my knowledge, I have accommodated all requests with regard to staff levels and salaries presented to me by Ranking Member Conyers. In addition, I have offered the minority their preferred additional office space in the Cannon Building. In closing, let me say I appreciate the spirit of cooperation which the Ranking Member has demonstrated. I hope he agrees the minority has been treated with fairness in matters of committee administration and funding. And I appreciate your support for this request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And now the ranking member, Mr. Connors, welcome from Michigan. Thank you, Chairman Nay and uh, Ranking Member Davis, Mr. Reynolds. I'm delighted to uh, be here today to join in with my chairman and friend, James Sensenbrenner, in the uh, making our joint request to you. It's easy for me. I've been a chairman for uh, six years, so I, I know how uh, pacifying ranking members is, is a, a, not an easy job. But for me, it's easy, and I, I hope I've made it easy for my chairman because we're working together in great harmony. A lot of people ask, uh, How's it like uh, with the new chairman? And I tell everyone, as I 
told them uh, privately as well as publicly that it's a pleasure to work with Jim Sensenbrenner because uh, uh, he tells it like it is and you never go away with any kind of misunderstanding about what's happening. Uh, the Judiciary Committee continues to be responsible for a large percentage of the total legislation processed by the House and yet it seems to me that even now our budget continues to be relatively small in comparison to the many committees that have a less demanding legislative agenda. I heard earlier that racial profiling was not going to come up in Judiciary Committee, uh, which is a surprise since it's my bill and it's been in committee in Judiciary Committee for two Congresses. Uh, I support, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, Mr. Sensenbrenner's overall request for a budget increase for our committee, <coughs> and I support the argument and the logic of the argument that the committee needs to modernize its equipment and technological capacities. I'm also uh, appreciative of his uh, important step uh, to remedy the uh, minority allocation that we've lived under for the past six previous years. And, and, and now he has uh, resolved the only other question that I lately posed to him about the dual use and has added uh, three additional slots to the minority, a move for which I am thankful and uh, continues uh, the spirit of cooperation in which we both work on the Judiciary Committee. We've had an auspicious beginning. Our contact is regular and amicable. Our staffs are working well together. And I, I say that, uh, that this spirit of fairness and respect for the uh, Democrats on the committee, I expect will continue and I support the requests that we make here jointly. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, both gentlemen for your testimony. Um, one comment and just one quick question, and I'll turn to the rest of the members. As far as your statement, uh, I want to tell the chairman about um, your, your funding when you were previous chairman. You didn't ask for any more than necessary. Chairman Bollard has unmercifully made a clear to this committee that that was the case. So I decided would he has verified that uh, for you. <laughs> quick question I have of the ranking member. Um, if, in fact, uh, this uh, committee can produce a resolution that has a two-thirds, one-third funding for all of the um, committees of the House, do you feel that uh, the uh, minority uh, members will, would be able to provide votes for the uh, resolution for the floor of the House? Well, Mr. Chairman, we've worked very closely with uh, Mr. Steny Hoyer, your ranking member, and I think that, uh, uh, certainly speaking for myself, I can assure you of that, and I am confident that uh, the Democratic members on the Judiciary Committee will, will also go along with this proposition. I want to thank both of you for, uh, for uh, working together. Mr. Davis? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sissenberg, I want to commend you mm -hmm on uh, your level of cooperation and the success you've had in presenting a joint proposal today to this committee with Mr. Conyers. And Mr. Conyers, I want to commend you on your part in that, and this is a dramatic improvement from the uh, past presentation of this committee in terms of level of cooperation. Do you have any advice for us we can share with some of the other committees, or what would you say to some of the other rankings who are trying to work through similar issues with their chairman or chairwoman? Yes, get a new chairman. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> strike that from the record. <laughs> Without objection. I think that pretty well covers it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. thank you. Questions of the panel? I have not. Again, thank you for your time, uh, both gentlemen. Thank you very thank much, you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Next will be uh, the Small Business Committee. Chairman uh, Manzullo and Ranking Member Velasquez. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Manzullo, we'll begin with you. 
Mr. Chairman and members of the Committee on House Administration, I'm pleased to testify in support of our funding request to cover the expenses of legislative initiatives, studies, technical upgrades, and investigations of the Committee on Small Business for 2001 and 2002 the amounts of $2,312,344 and $2,486,439, respectively. This committee will be working on critical issues impacting small businesses. The committee will continue its role as advocate, ensuring that small business interests are defined and taken into consideration during all stages of the development of public policy and legislative initiatives. The committee will focus on tax relief for small business, review the regulatory burdens on small business, and continue its oversight role of the Small Business Administration programs. In addition, the committee plans to look at other critical issues, including but not limiting, limited to contract bundling, small business access to capital, and the need to renew our disadvantaged communities <coughs> through increasing entrepreneurial opportunities. Despite our increased legislative pace and our aggressive agenda, our budget represents a serious effort to keep committee spending in line without compromising our mission or our vision. As in previous years, the minority's requests have been incorporated into the committee's budget proposal. The committee has a history of bipartisan cooperation, a tradition that I fully intend to continue. The committee has passed its rules and oversight plan and since Republicans gained the majority, the minority has received one-third of the committee staff slots and control over one-third of the personnel budget. I intend to maintain these ratios during the 107th Congress. By comparison, during the 103rd Congress, the minority in the Republicans received 22% in 1993 and 25% in 1994. Of the majority staff positions, there are administrative and nonpartisan in nature. There are three of those positions. The chief clerk, who handles hearing arrangements in the committee calendar, the finance clerk, who looks after all committee finances, and the print web manager, who oversees the maintenance of the committee website and the posting of hearing transcripts, testimony, and rules on the site. Unlike some other committees, we count these positions against the majority staff allocation. As in the past, the committee will see that the resource needs the minority are met and, in fact, has requested in this budget funding to upgrade or replace, or replace equipment used by the minority. As with my predecessor, I intend to run the committee in a fiscally responsible manner and ensure that resources are available to support the committee's mission. The committee has made a conscious effort to upgrade and budget for the needs of both the majority and the minority. We want to ensure that the action and resources the committee are readily accessible to the small business community. This will be done by purchasing the necessary computer equipment to keep pace with technological developments, sending the much requested email throughout the country, updating and maintaining the small business website testimony and other pertinent small business information, and equipping the hearing rooms with the ability to broadcast live hearings over the internet, upgrading the antiquated audio system in our committee room in the Cannon House office building. It's my intention with this budget to allow for the upgrades and purchases of new e computer equipment during the 107th Congress to bring the committee closer to contemporary standards. Our 107th Congress committee budget reflects the projected workload as described in the oversight report and has always been sensitive to this and supportive of minority access to resources allocated to the committee. This committee, regardless of which party has held the majority, has had a long history of bipartisan cooperation. And I fully expect that to continue through this Congress. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, Ranking Member uh, Velasquez. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Ney, Ranking Member Davis, and members of the committee. I come before you today having completed my first full term as the Ranking Democratic Member of the Committee on Small Business. One of my primary goals is not just to assess the amount budgeted to the committee, but to provide a comprehensive evaluation of its ability to carry out its duties. If we are to accomplish our goals, we need to have the proper resources necessary to undertake our legislative agenda. The Small Business Committee must continue to serve 
as the watchdog for small businesses, which are the primary force in our economy. Our new chairman, Mr. Manzullo, has put forth an aggressive oversight plan that built on the committee's success in the last Congress, during which we passed 27 bills and saw 20 signed into law. Unfortunately, I have to report to the committee that not only have I not seen the committee's budget, but also the minority was not given the opportunity for meaningful input into the process. Mr. Manzullo and I did have an initial meeting to discuss the committee's agenda, legislative plan, and administrative issues. At that time, I indicated some of the needs that the minority had. Mr. Manzullo expressed a willingness to address them, but little has been done since then. And not time was the minority consulted to fully explain our funding needs. Repeated attempts to gain even minimum information has, has occurred. We have, however, received limited information in some committee funding and the portion that is planned for the minority. However, because we have not received the comprehensive budget, we have no way of knowing if these numbers are accurate. Based on what I have learned, the chairman is requesting a 6 and 9 percent increase. While this is similar to the request made by, Mr. Cher by Chairman Talent, it is clearly insufficient to meet the current staffing needs of the committee. During my last appearance before the committee, I expressed some reservations over our funding levels. Today, I have a much greater perspective on the overall needs of the minority. In retrospect, the funding request by Chairman Talent was insufficient and the final amount provided under the funding resolution left us severely underfunded, greatly impacting our ability to hire and retain qualified staff. Mr. Chairman, House salary levels are quickly falling behind that of the Senate and the private sector, causing a staff drain of qualified individuals. Speaker Haster recognized this when he authorized a 10% increase to each member's representational allowance. He knew we needed to make house salaries more competitive. That is why our committee's request for less makes no sense. A more realistic <coughs> level of funding for salaries will have been a 20 to 30% increase. Let me point out that the Small Business Committee has the fewest staff lots of any committee. The committee currently has 31 allocated slots 10 of which got to the minority, or slightly less than the traditional one-third. When I first was selected as the ranking Democratic member, I expressed reservations <laughs> over the ability of the minority to provide support to the members of the committee at this funding level. I was assured by the chairman that most of the administrative functions will be handled through the majority. That simply has not been the case. Instead, our committee relies on one full staff full-time staffer and the support of one shared employee to provide administrative services to the minority members. To correct this inequality, I'm requesting an overall increase in the committee slots to 36, with the minority afforded the traditional one-third or 12. In terms of the committee's other expenses, it has been customary for the minority to receive reasonable accommodation. My past experience demonstrates that this has not taken place. Items like periodicals, software, computers, copiers, fax machines, and staff travel requests has all been denied. Our photocopiers and fax machines are antiquated, having been in the minority office since the 103rd Congress. It is my understanding that Mr. Manzullo's budget request includes a request for a copier and two fax machines for the minority. But had the minority been fully consulted, we would have pointed out that there was a greater need than just for those items. By the end of this Congress, the computers used by the, minor by the minority will be over four years old. With the ever-changing technology, this makes us unable to serve our members. This item should have been factored into the committee budget. It is my hope that this committee will see fit to provide us with a funding level that is more realistic and represents our true needs. I re reiterate the request I, met, I made last Congress, that the minority be given control over one-third of the entire budget allotted to the committee, just as the Committee on the House Administration and the Committee on Ways and Means receive. I'm confident that the Small Business Committee is committed to working together to strengthen our nation's small businesses, and if there is anything to be learned from the previous Congress, it is that working together in a bipartisan fashion provides significant results. 
I look forward to working with the chairman to continue this success, and I hope this committee will take into strong consideration my recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, the way uh, I read the chart up here, uh, there's probably about a $124,000 difference, I'm assuming, when I read this chart of having uh, a two-third, one-third is uh, are the numbers that I'm looking at. At least. Th that's, b that would be between the request and the amount that the minority would, would want to come up to the two-third, one-third. What I want to ask um, uh, from uh, both of uh, my colleagues, um, d do you feel though on the staff is a two-third, one-third? Right now? Split, yeah. Um, basically, it is. A little bit below, we share some uh, administrative, administrative function okay. through a, a part-time staff. But the problem that we have is that when it comes to any administrative questions, it's really difficult uh, to get the type of services from the majority. You know, I, Mr. Sure. Chairman, I would state that we gave to Mr. Day, um, who is the <laughs> staff person for Melissa. Mrs. Velasquez, a copy of the proposed budget. We also asked them what equipment they would need. We were told two copiers and a fax machine. I mean, and, uh, we're uh, just, let if, me I, if I may finish, sure. and we've always been open to any request that we want. I mean, we prepared our documents based upon uh, the questions that we asked of them and the answers that we got. This is the first I found out that the minority had a need for new computers. and. Uh, obviously, if, if we had known that, we would have factored that into the budget. We're still willing to do that. And I would also state that um, if that be the case, and I would take Mrs. Velasquez's word for gold on that, that the committee perhaps might honor her request uh, to add a little bit more money to this budget so that she can buy the computers and bring it up mm -hmm. to speed. I mean, we're open to that. Well, I, and I would we just need to let know me, that. Mr. Yes. Chairman, if I may, yes. uh, let me just state it to the record. Uh, sending an email to my staff director is not being consulted uh, with, the, with the numbers. And after that, we placed two more calls into your staff, and we didn't get any type of information. We never saw the full budget, and uh, uh, that is uh, the respect that I expect from you. And if, you know, I am willing to work with you in a bipartisan way, the same way we did it with Chairman Talent. But I cannot accept for your staff uh, that you put out numbers without consulting and, and asking us what our real needs are. I think what I'm hearing uh, now, though, from the chairman is that you're willing to to take a look this week at and some additional chairman is that you're willing to to take a look this week at and some additional requests. I would also point out to the uh, uh, provided that there be some additional money added into the budget. That's what I, everybody wants to have. No, I, I understand that, but the you know we had asked what new equipment they wanted. This is what mm -hmm. we got back, and computers are extremely expensive and. Uh, to the extent that um, whatever the cost would be, I would ask that that be, would be mm -hmm. added into our request. I mean, this is a bare bones request. It does not uh, ask for, a, a, I think it's a 1% request over, over the last Congress. Uh, and we're trying to run it as economically as possible, but I do not want to sit here and say that it's going to be such a request that's going to deny uh, Mrs. Velasquez of the opportunity to buy the computers that she needs. That's probably what, hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars? I don't know. To replace those computers, I know it's a big ticket item, and I would ask that that her request uh, for those those computers be factored <coughs> in, uh, uh, in the final decision made by this committee. Um, also, the, I would note that the you know the resources of our committee to be able to get some estimates for you to to be able to to talk about it. You know, we can be available for that. The other thing I think we we've, we've run into with you know almost every committee, you also have new people new chairs, new ranking members. Uh, people ran things with different styles, and some people had hearing rooms that were upgraded, and some people had hearing rooms that actually had no upgrades. Uh, we found some of the committees, uh, both minority and majority, would have some of the best equipment, and some committees, the copiers barely run. So and I, we, have a, we have a markup process, and we have the committee here, which uh, I just assure you that we'll work with, with both uh, sides of the aisle to, you know, to see what we can uh, do to listen to the requests. Mr. Davis. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
First, let me start by congratulating you on becoming chairman of this committee, Thank Mr. You. Manzillo. And I'm sure that you uh, intend to continue to uphold the tradition of this committee to work on a bipartisan basis and produce some very important legislation to benefit small business in this country. And I also want to applaud you on taking an aggressive role in oversight. I think that's terribly important. I just want to echo what the chairman just said. I encourage you all just to spend some more time sitting down face to face <coughs> over a cup of coffee, uh, getting to know each other, and at least consulting and trying to work together so you can maintain that tradition of producing legislation. Your committee was one of the more productive committees in the last Congress. Correct. And we 27 that. bills. So we want to see that continue, but it really starts with the personal relationship you all are developing. And I think just the conversation you all have had in the last few minutes is very encouraging. And uh, I do want to ask you a question. Uh, regardless of what funding level this committee ultimately bestows upon your committee, and I hope we can provide an increase, would it be your intention to provide at least a one-third level of funding for the minority? Or for the personnel, that's correct. And with respect to your other expenses beyond personal, some of the basic <coughs> needs that Ms. Uh, that will stay uh, with the chairman. I'm ultimately responsible for who's buying the equipment and staples and stuff like that. And if there's a cost overrun, that comes upon my shoulders. So I'll maintain the position in the last three Congresses where uh, the minority gets one third of the personnel budget. The personnel budget is 91% of the entire budget. And with regard to supplies and things like that, we've always given the minority whatever they need. But somebody has to be in control of ordering stationery, things like that. Otherwise, you can get a, you can get into a cost overrun. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes, uh, it's just not enough to come here and say one third, uh, two third. We, minority really needs to have control of the one third budget. Because if every time we have to make a decision and place a request, we have to go to the majority. It, 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 sometimes we don't get the type of health or services that we really need in order to provide the services to the members of our side. So I don't see any reason as to why we cannot have full control of one third of the budget. If I need software, if I need to buy Washington Post paper, do I have to go every time to the, to, the, uh, to the majority to make those requests? It just doesn't make sense. Well, Mr. Chairman, l let me just urge you to try to work closely with Ms. Vasquez on this issue and also the other point that was brought up, which was the, simply the timing of processing some of these financial requests so our members can get out around the country and listen to small business owners and make informed judgments on some of these very important issues. I'm confident you all can work that out. and she's been very specific and um, look forward to seeing you all develop the thank cooperation you. on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Well, I want to thank uh, both of you for uh, coming here and getting to the, the, the point that you have thank you. Uh, on the budget. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Next, we have uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, and it'll be Chairman uh, Tozan and uh, Ranking Member, the Honorable Mr. Mr. Dingle from Michigan. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. To you, sir. Oh, well. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman Tozzi. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, to you and to the ranking minority members, let me uh, first say we're grateful for the opportunity to testify before you today in support of the Committee on Energy and Commerce's budget request for the 7th Congress. We've already submitted ex extensive documents to you on the budget request, as well as our extensive oversight plan and many other materials. So I'll, I'll be very brief this morning. I've, I'm accompanied, of course, by Ranking Minority Member, former Chairman of the Committee, Mr. Dingle from Michigan, as well as three of the subcommittee chairs of the six subcommittee a chairs. Actually, Chairman, not to interrupt you, we were just kind of commenting we didn't know if we should have our uh, Security people stand here behind us. We brought reinforcements. We weren't sure what it was, but uh, Chairman, I think these are the only subcommittees looking for uh, money. <laughs> Go ahead and continue. Well, I wanted I wanted them to accompany me today, and and uh, Ms. Barton would be here, but he's he's on the steering committee right now. Uh, to make to make a simple case to you very quickly, one is that this is not the Commerce Committee of the last six years. This is the the Energy and Commerce Committee of this Congress, uh, who, which is going to have to respond 
in large measure to an enormous agenda uh, that is being requested of us by our own president um, in his State of the Union address. Fully a dozen of the priorities of President Bush discussed in his State of the Union address fall under the jurisdiction of the Energy Commerce Committee. And we are going to be responsible, Republicans and Democrats, for acting on that agenda and for delivering to the floor uh, pieces of legislation, hopefully in a bipartisan fashion, that addresses those major concerns. Uh, this committee has been revitalized. Uh, I know you've heard testimony that some of our jurisdiction has moved. That has been true in several Congresses. But the fact of the matter is this committee is no longer a committee sitting on legislation, sitting on its enormous potential. We are energized. We, we now are divided into six subcommittees of enormously uh, active chairs who are going to do an aggressive campaign uh, effort in, uh, in terms of getting the agenda of this Congress to the floor of the House on time and in good order. Uh, if you have ever seen this committee work under uh, former chairman uh, uh, John Dingell, uh, you're going to see a very comparable activity at the committee level uh, this year. We have uh, literally much to do, and, and we need the resources to do it. We've, we've, we've presented to you, I think, a modest budget increase request, and we've done it for a very specific reason. First of all, let me tell you that we're in deep competition for the kind of staff we need for this committee. A first-year lawyer out of law school in this town gets 150000 We can't pay that to our council. Uh, we, have, we have trouble attracting and keeping the kind of quality people we need. We're doing our best what we have. Uh, secondly, 91% uh, of our budget goes into salary personnel. Uh, we literally devoted to the manpower talent that literally helps our committee function well and, and does a good job for this Congress. Uh, secondly, the increase we've requested we requested it is in large measure designed to help reach that 33 percent goal that all of the committees and I know are trying to reach in terms of sharing resources with the minority to make sure we truly empower the minority to work with us in terms of a bipartisan effort. Uh, we've made a good faith effort already to reach that goal. Uh, John Dingell can tell you if we've done a good job, but I think we have. Under our budget, the minority will have attained, uh, beginning in 2002, the minority will have attained both of these goals, uh, both one-third of the resources of the budget and one-third of the allocation of staff, recognizing that we have certain administrative personnel that we both share. Uh, the third thing I want to mention to you is that our two committees' main hearing rooms, 20, uh, 2123 and 21, 2322, desperately need upgrading. I've talked to you, Mr. Chairman, about this. We are the High Technology Committee of the Congress. An incredible amount of high technology business of the Congress comes to us and we have an 18th century room. Uh, we simply don't have the kind of wiring, the kind of uh, upgrades, the kind of connections to the Internet and to the, the new broadband systems that are going to be necessary for us to become the truly high technology center for much of the work of this Congress. And I would urge you to, to help us in that regard. We haven't, as you know, included that within our budget. We hope the House will fund those upgrades as they have for most of the other committees of the House at this time. Uh, Chairman A, I've, I've again brought several subcommittee members with me, and uh, with whatever time I have remaining, I'd like to give them each a shot, Mr. Stearns. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do you want me to move the microphone, or does it matter? If you could use it, yeah. Thank you. Um, as the, the, as uh, Chairman Toza has indicated, he we now have six committees, and I have what's called the Commerce, uh, Consumer Protection and Trade. Within that committee, uh, we are bringing witnesses from Europe, from Canada, from Australia and New Zealand to talk about privacy. Um, and so this is a new committee in which we need the resources. And we're committed to bipartisanship on this uh, subcommittee and trying to come up with a privacy piece of legislation uh, and dealing with all of e-commerce and all the nuances that go with it. So I urge you to consider an, uh, certainly an increase for the energy and commerce and obviously an, an increase that we're going to use for the minority, too. Uh, I make that point. Uh, the other point I would make briefly is that although the chairman indicated we lost jurisdiction, as I understand that that jurisdiction number of employees was six. That includes staff for the minority. So if you say the Commerce Committee lost to the Banking Committee, which is now the Financial Services, jurisdiction, that only represents a very small amount. Uh, and so that if you say we have to increase the financial institutions a significant amount to cover this new jurisdiction, remember, put that in light. This can be uh, corroborated by uh, the chairman's staff. Uh, so we still retain all our mission. And in fact, uh, as the chairman's pointed out, it's increased dramatically. And, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Cliff. Chairman Bill Rock. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman and, and, and members. Uh, thanks for giving us the opportunity, just very quickly, uh, to sort of try to complement, if you will, the other comments uh, and to respond very briefly to Mr. Reynolds' point about the only committee look, looking for money. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, in, in, in the entire list of committees, we're in the bottom half in terms of, of the percentage increase that we're looking for. Uh, so but God knows we are not the only committee that looking not only for money, but we're in the bottom half of the amount, of the percentage amount. And if you basically might say, well, that's because in the last Congress you had a large amount. Well, we, get, we were in the bottom half, or in that category, at least the bottom half, or certainly in the middle, no more than that, uh, in the prior Congress in terms of increase from, from prior Congress, like 5% increase for 106, uh, 105 to 106. So it's not like we are floating in money. Uh, and I might also add that as chairman of probably the busiest, it certainly used to be one of the busiest, that I think still we are hoping it's going to continue to be the busiest uh, subcommittee in the Congress, we held one field hearing in six years because the full committee chairman and his, and his staff kept telling us that we just did not have the money. So we have not been floating in money. And Mr. Tozan mentioned something about the, uh, the hearing rooms. Well, we, we kind of thought we had three hearing rooms, but one of them is so tiny that you can't really fit, you can't fit any press in there and whatnot, and the decision has been made by the chairman that we probably would not use that. So we're limited to two hearing rooms for, the, I think, arguably, possibly, maybe the, the busiest committee in the Congress. And the dozen issues that the chairman mentioned uh, that were part of the president's speech that come within our jurisdiction, something like three-fourths of those come are part of the, the health committee. I mean, I think we all know the issues that are out there as far as the American people are concerned. So these resources are, are desperately needed. Appreciate your attention. Thank and you. Chairman Upton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to add that uh, because of our busy agenda on so many different fronts, whether they be energy, health care, telecommunications, uh, we actually added a subcommittee. Uh, so we have more uh, staff uh, that were needed uh, and more responsibilities. We do have a very busy schedule. We, in essence, have uh, two hearing rooms uh, available. But, you know, I look at my new role as chairman of the Telecommunications and Internet Subcommittee. Uh, six, eight years ago, nobody knew that we, uh, about this Internet. We are regulating, in essence, uh, with the FCC, an industry that, can, uh, that spend and control tens and tens of billions of dollars. Uh, we have to have the adequate resources uh, as we look at issues like high-speed Internet, as we look at uh, the, the change to digital broadcasting, high-definition TV, all those different things. We've got to have the resources. We've got to have the staff, particularly with, with large members uh, on the subcommittees. You know that this was one of the most sought-after uh, committees that there, that there was uh, on both sides of the aisle. And, uh, uh, Minority Leader Gephardt, uh, uh, promised a number of members uh, that they would get on, on the committee. We're, we're committed to a third uh, uh, of, of the spending, working with the minority. Um, but we've got real key issues. We've got to have the resources if we're going to expect to deliver, particularly with a new administration. And for my role, uh, the new head of the FCC, Michael Powell, who I know is going to do a very good job in that uh, particular role. Thank you much. Mr. Uh, Chairman, we've sent you a 30-page oversight, single-spaced 30-page identification of our oversight function. Okay. Chairman Gilmore is here. Uh, who will be, uh, I mean Greenwood, who will be doing the oversight function. Gilmore is holding a hearing on Brownfield just as we, as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to introduce Chairman uh, Greenwood for that, that function. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very briefly, uh, we do have an, a very aggressive and extensive oversight uh, agenda for this Congress, <coughs> uh, one which we hope will save uh, billions, literally billions of dollars for uh, the taxpayers of this country. We are, our number one focus right now is on HIC for the health healthcare finance agency, uh, which uh, about which is a general agreement it needs to be completely redesigned, reconstructed, reinvented. It spends a billion dollars a day, a billion dollars a day, and we th believe uh, wholeheartedly that with uh, a, a good process of oversight and investigation, and then the uh, legislation which will follow to redesign it. Uh, we'll be able to save enormous am amount of money, as well as, as provide a, a much better service to the, to the, uh, to the elderly and, and the disabled and the low income in terms of health care. So well, we were over time, I know, but I, I did yeah. want to introduce Chairman uh, Barton, I, who's handling the whole overview of the energy crisis in America under our committee's jurisdiction. Well, I would like to move on now, though, and then we'll have Mr. Barton available. I appreciate it to uh, Mr. Dingle. I'm at the disposal of the committee. Mr. Chairman, thank you. For the record, my name is John Dingle. I express my thanks to you and to Mr. Davis and the members of the committee for giving me the opportunity to appear. To show my appreciation, I will ask unanimous consent to insert my full statement in the record. Without objection. 
and summarize briefly. I want to first commend Chairman Tozan for the cooperative way in which he has addressed the concerns of the minority. Uh, <clears throat> and I would note that I support the budget that has been submitted by this committee, and as does as do the minority members of the committee, and we urge this committee to accept the budget that's submitted by the Commerce Committee uh, as proposed. I would note that should the increases not be approved, the minority will continue to seek one-third of the budget and one-third of the staffing. And I take Mr. Tozan, uh, who is an honorable man, at his word and hope that under any scenario we will get a fair allocation. Uh, I do not want anybody to underestimate the seriousness which the minority views this matter, particularly in view of the unfortunate treatment by the House Republican leadership on committee ratios. Uh, I would note that there was a significant loss, I think incorrectly so, the jurisdiction of this committee to, an, to another committee with regard to securities. Uh, the question has been raised about how, uh, how much uh, staff resources and that sort of thing that would entail. The minority on this committee was able to handle that matter with the efforts of one staff member full time, admittedly a uniquely capable and able staff member, uh, one of the most respected securities experts in uh, Washington and in the country, uh, and the assistance of one additional staff member to about one-fifth of that staff member's time. So the, uh, uh, there's not a great deal of concern need be given uh, either about the loss of the jurisdiction of this committee in terms of the workload. We still have a significant shortfall of staff available to address those matters, and I would note uh, the committee across the hall, which got those jurisdictions, really doesn't have great need of additional staff for that particular matter if they were able to retain competent people and will apply themselves diligently to those matters. <laughs> Having said that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your courtesy to me. It's a pleasure to be back before this committee. I received some rather shiny treatment by your predecessor and my appearances before, before this committee. And it is with profound regret that he is not that I note that he is not here any longer. <laughs> with that, uh, <laughs> and by the way, Mr. Chairman, I express to you my particular good wishes on your accession to this responsibility. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I have uh, two observations I want to make, and then a, a question of uh, Mr. Dingle. Uh, with regard to the equipment request, uh, you've requested an 18 percent increase from the 106 Congress authorization. Now, this was a larger increase over the funding that was actually spent in the 106th. But what I, I wanted to point out in your defense is, on the surface of it, if you look at your request, well, it was larger than was actually spent, 106th. And I would point out that the money wasn't spent. And so, therefore, you don't have the upgrades that, in fact, were requested before. And I think that's an important point, frankly, to uh, point out. The other, uh, I'm glad you uh, addressed the travel budget because it is an increase. Uh, however, if there weren't uh, a large amount of field hearings and you anticipate you're going to do field hearings, which I think is good to go out before the, the public, not everybody can f drive or fly to Washington, D.C., and I think it's a great thing to do the hearings. So that would also, you know, account for that. I also think it is good you did address, because questions have arisen and will continue to rise, frankly, about if you lost jurisdiction. Why then do you need, you know, the people uh, or the, the money? And it therefore should flow from the committee into the financial services. And I think you, you, it's good you would address that. And again, we'll continue to address it in the next couple of weeks. If, because if I can add one further On the thing. service, and I'm not trying to be, be critical, but on the service, people look at that and say, well, this is the way it should run. And, and you know, as you know, that's been mentioned here publicly. And, and so I think to address well, that. Well, and, and let me make, mention one more thing. The greatest work of that subcommittee that included both environmental work and the and the securities. It was a, it was had two two jobs and had six people assigned to it. In total, one minority member. The greatest work of that subcommittee is done. That was Graham Leach Blyler, and it's done. So even if we had retained the jurisdiction uh, over securities, there's just not that much work required as was required in the last six years. Keep that in mind when you talk about that. We, the, the jurisdiction of our committee, or these six subcommittees, is incredible. And much of the work that the, the then Commerce Committee should have done never got done in the last six years. We will do them in this two years. Uh, one question I have, and I'll turn to, to the other members of the committee, but it'll be of, of Mr. Dingle. If we can, in fact, uh, 
achieve a two-third, one-third uh, ratio uh, to the satisfaction of the, of the ranking members and the chairmans, and we can do that across the board, which this committee does. We do two-thirds, one-thirds. We, we just give the one-third uh, to uh, the minority, and it's, it's their business of, of what they need to do with it. But if we can achieve that, do you feel there'll be public votes, you know, on the floor of the House from a portion of the, of the members of the committee, of the minority? <clears throat> I have to give you this answer, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want to support this, this committee's budget, and I want to support the whole budget. Uh, Mr. Tozen has been very fair in dealing with the minority on these matters. I have to observe that I have other Democratic colleagues who serve as ranking minority members, and I have to see to it that they are satisfied and that they feel that they've been fairly treated. If they come to that conclusion, uh, I would, would say that absent some extraordinary surprise that I don't see in this budget, uh, I would probably be supporting the, the, and voting for and urging the support of this to my colleagues on, on, on both sides of the aisle. Uh, but it is, it is dependent not just on, on, on my concerns, but very frankly on the concerns of my colleagues who would serve as ranking members. But I repeat to you, Mr. Chairman, I am anxious to be supportive of this budget, and I think that ending this warfare which has gone on between the parties uh, is in the interest of all and in the interest of the institution. Mm -hmm. And I'm pleased that you have an interest in resolving it, and I commend you for that. I want to thank you. Thank both of you for working together. Mr. Davis. Um, Mr. Chairman, I want to commend you on setting aside funds to modernize your committee and to try to bring the world into your room, particularly on the e-commerce issues you'll be dealing with. Uh, Mr. Dingell has adequately handled a 6 to 1 ratio today here in terms of presentation, but going back to the resources of the committee, regardless of what funding level this committee approves for your committee, would it be your intention to assure that Mr. Dingell and his folks will have at least a one-third share of whatever amount is appropriated? Well, if, if we were not giving, any, given the increase to make this possible, as you know, we're allocating, I think, 75 percent of the new slots uh, and of the increase we've requested to uh, bring the minority up to uh, over 33 percent of the, of, the, of the staff slotting. Not over just That's 30, 33 percent, I think. But the, the bottom line, if we don't receive that, we will have some difficulty reaching that. We'll try, we'll get it very close to it, if not at that point, uh, without this increase. On the budget side, we'll do it regardless. Uh, we have made an agreement not to count, I think, five of the administrative slots which serve the whole committee, both Democrats and Republicans. And with that agreement, we, we can make a full one-third allocation, even if you don't give us this, in this increase. This increase is critical if we're to achieve the one-third in the staff slots which we want to do and which we will struggle to do regardless of what you do. You will simply make it possible for us if you do this. Chairman Barton will have to leave, Mr. Chairman. I, I did want to give him a chance to say just a bit about the enormous work that the Energy Subcommittee will do. If, if, if you can maybe withhold uh, and, and allow him that, Mr. Davis. One minute, two minutes. Could I have permission? I don't want to yes. speak out of turn, out of order. First, on the, on the equipment upgrade, True story, in the last Congress, I was holding hearings with an egg timer that I brought from my office. I mean, you know, you know it was a good egg timer, but, <laughs> you know, we need some upgrades in our equipment in the, in the Energy and Commerce Committee. On the, on the um, overall budget level, right now, I have requests from the majority whip to hold a field hearing in Houston, Texas on the Clean Air Act. Uh, formal committee, subcommittee, which I'm going to do. I've got a pending request to hold a field hearing in California on the electricity crisis, which we're looking to see if we can do. I have a pending request to go to the Northeast to hold a hearing on the potential shortages of electricity uh, this summer, which I've got under consideration. Uh, I've got a, a commitment to take uh, uh, a, a group of congressmen, and we want to make it a field hearing, to Yucca Mountain for the high-level nuclear waste issue. It's, it's going to be up for uh, authorization this year. So there's a lot of legitimate reasons to fund some of these requests uh, in addition to the request that the, the chairman and the ranking member have made. So I would hope that uh, you would look favorably on it. And I appreciate the ability to, to have some comment. You forgot one of the requests. Thank Coming to me. Eastern Ohio to review the Clean Air Act. <laughs> well, forgot that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's one we'll put at the top of the list if we get the funding. 
I would just you. like to give Mr. Dingle a chance to respond if he cares to do so to the comments that uh, Chairman Tozen made about his intentions with respect to sharing the resources of the committee, regardless of what increase we might fund. Well, I, I, I repeat, uh, Mr. Tozen, I have a good relationship, and he, is, he has kept his word to me in, in every instance. I, w I would note that if, if there's not enough money to progress us towards the one-third, uh, we will have to review whether or not we will be able to support the budget. Uh, I would note to you that, that, that the minority is showing patience here. The first year of the budget does not carry us to a third, but the second year does. Uh, and, and I think that, that I'm willing to accept that because I understand the difficulties that confront this committee and also the difficulties that confront Mr. Tozan, and I want to, I want to be cooperative with each. I would note that there, that uh, the, that uh, the five uh, people who are treated as administrative employees are in fact administrative employees, and I'm, I'm not discontent with that arrangement. I want to make that clear. Thank you. Chairman. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, first of all, if the Dean of the House says that Chairman Tozan is fair, it must be true. Um, Thank you. Just for the record, I, when I saw the jurisdictional change and began to look at the budget uh, in my conversation with Chairman Tozan, I, I am clearly satisfied that the presentation he made today on, on staffing and the jurisdictional change did not affect a new chairman beginning to get focused on the broad jurisdiction of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And two, uh, listening to him on many occasions on uh, the aggressiveness that he wants uh, six subcommittees to uh, begin to undertake uh, their responsibilities in the Commerce Committee, I think it, it warrants us a, a close look at the, uh, the request, even as it uh, gets to be a, a sizable uh, increase. Thank you. Mr. Hoyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would hope that Mr. Reynolds uh, would in the future on other issues when he hears the Dean of the House uh, speak when the Dean's uh, would, right, would I do. take it with uh, equal <laughs> credibility. <laughs> I, I, I thank my colleagues. I want to uh, say that I apologize for being uh, uh, late. Uh, we were uh, meeting in the appropriations to uh, take subcommittee uh, positions, and if you're not there, you're in trouble. Uh, I would tell the ranking member with whom I have worked uh, for all the 20 years that I've been here and who has been a extraordinary leader of this House that uh, Bob Nay has been working very, the chairman of this subcommittee, of this committee, has been working very hard to ensure that we uh, reach, not, not work towards, but reach the one-third, two-thirds, which is a minimum, we believe, not a, not a, not a floor or a ceiling, but a minimum. Uh, and I, I know the dean would want to know that the Chairman Nay has been working very hard to affect that end. Secondly, uh, Billy, uh, I understand what you're saying, and uh, uh, the Chairman, uh, Mr. Dingle, had indicated to me that you were working together on this. Um, we have not moved as quickly as we would have liked to in years past. I'm not talking about this year; in years past, on this committee, but. Uh, and I would hope that we could make every effort this year to get to the one-third uh, with the consideration of the five administrative, which I understand there's no disagreement on, and the resources. Um, Billy, let me ask you a question, if I can. Uh, maybe this has been asked. It's my, under on, on, it's my understanding that the resources and the slots will be fully under the uh, uh, control of and at the discretion of the minority. Is that Absolutely. That's right? the way we've al always operated. Mr. Dingle controls the use of those funds and the, and the application of those staff to the issues as he sees fit. We always sign off on it without question. Okay. Um, and if uh, my understanding of your answer to Mr. Davis uh, and to the chairman was that in the event we can't meet the entire uh, budget request, and, and I understand the request, that the uh, effort to attain the one-third and the reality of one-third, two-thirds distribution would not be adversely affected, although, as I understand what you're saying, it makes it more difficult. Yeah, we're committed to continue to work toward that goal with or without the assistance of additional funding. Obviously, you can make it happen. And the plan that uh, Mr. Dingell and I have worked out and our staffs is a realistic one within the numbers we brought to you. Uh, as 
one of my subcommittee chairs pointed out, we're within the lower half of percentage increase of the budget request that you're looking at. I know the great job you have of satisfying all these many committees, but keep in mind, as I pointed out before you walked in, Mr. White, a dozen of the President's initiatives that we're going to have to work out in a very bipartisan way if any of them are going to get done have to come out of our committee. And, and while I, I don't, I don't want to say anything derogatory about anybody in the past, but our committee literally has been on hold for a long time because we, we've not moved a lot of legislation that was controversial and, and obviously we had a president of a different party and there was some reluctance to move legislation that might not meet his approval anyhow. Uh, our committee now is, is going to be charged with delivering on that agenda in a way that hopefully works out the concerns of the minority. This is a huge task, and this is not the committee of old. This is a new, energized, extraordinarily uh, aggressive agenda that this committee will pursue, and uh, we, need, we frankly need your help to make it happen. Mr. Chairman, let me repeat for you and the, and the ranking member that which I uh, stated at the outset of these hearings. Uh, I am one of those who believes that the legislative branch of government needs resources sufficient to accomplish that which the American public sent us here to do, A, adopt policy, and B, to make sure that that policy is being carried out effectively and efficiently. Yeah. And you cannot do that without sufficient staff and resources to accomplish that objective. It's, it's my view that when the new majority came in in 1995, uh, frankly, they and the Clinton White House had made the same sort of pledges. The Clinton White House had said they were going to cut the budget uh, 25 percent, and the contract with America said you were going to cut, I don't know whether there was a percentage, but substantially, and you cut, I think, a third. Uh, both, I think, the Clinton White House and, as you have experienced over time now, the responsibilities of leadership and responding to these issues, you have found that, uh, uh, frankly, the staffs were not sufficient to accomplish that objective. So I am not surprised that you and others are coming back in and saying we cannot do the job you expect us with the resources that we now are and asking for increases, A, for, to meet the cost of living uh, adjustments that we make for, for salaries and for our other expenses, but B, to uh, uh, make sure we have sufficient staff to uh, carry out our responsibilities. It's a, it's a huge executive department and we need those uh, assets. Uh, and I think the American public expects us to do that job. So I'm not surprised when you and the ranking member indicate to me that uh, uh, you, you're going to have a vigorous agenda. This committee, under Chairman Dingell, was probably as conscientious a watchdog for the citizens of this country yes, as was. any committee we had. And it was, one of, it was one of the best oversight organs of our Congress. We intended to make it one again. We've got to have your help. We believe, Mr. Horrier, that Age should not just bring wrinkles, it ought to bring wisdom. And as we've aged in the majority, I hope we've got the wisdom to know we've got to arm ourselves to do our job right. Well, we're, we're on our side hopeful that that occurs as well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Micah? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have some uh, questions about uh, increasing, uh, a, a very substantial increase uh, in the total budget request, uh, given the fact that uh, some of the jurisdiction of the uh, committee has been transferred, uh, I guess the financial services uh, transfer has been completed, is that correct? Uh, yes, it has been completed. And how many people final. were involved in that activity before? There were a total of six subcommittee staffers who were assigned to the work of that subcommittee. And, th and that area. Keep in mind that subcommittee had dual responsibilities, also had oversight over the hazardous waste of the country. And the work of the subcommittee was largely completed during the, during the last six years with the passage of the Graham Leach Bliley Act. So while it was a, while, while we considered it a serious, a serious event, the fact of the matter is that the, what jurisdiction remains of the, of the six subcommittees of our committee is, is by comparison enormous to the amount of jurisdiction that was, that was switched. Secondly, most of that work, most of the work on health care was, our committee was bypassed in the last six years. Very little work was done on energy, as you know. We've got an energy crisis now building. Uh, while we were active on telecom and we were active on some of the other areas, we did not do Superfund reform or, 
or hazardous uh, uh, or uh, municipal waste reform, Safe Water Drinking Act reform. We had not done a, a rewrite of the Clean Air Act, which is before us again. Uh, there is enormous work <coughs> that we sort of inherited because it was left undone in the last six years. So you should not you should not read from that transfer uh, anything other than the fact um, that 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 a small area of our work is now going to another committee, while a great more work has come to us. One of the problems we have is um, we have uh, Mr. Micah, could I just just make a go comment? right ahead? The minority committed to the work that was transferred from us, the full time work of one staff member and approximately one fifth of the time of another. Uh, now, admittedly, the staff person who did the principal work for that subcommittee was one of the, one of the out outstanding security specialists in the country. Uh, but this tends to indicate to me that, that we did not lose a great deal of jurisdiction in terms of workload, uh, and that the uh, new Committee on Financial Services has not achieved very large additional burdens. Uh, remembering that the majority staff dealt with uh, a large number of other questions on that particular subcommittee and probably less than one half of the full staff of the majority on that particular subcommittee, which Mr. Well, Cozans indicated was six, I think was used for, that, for the purposes of dealing with securities. I think that uh, we're trying to look at this fairly and squarely, but you have a diminution in responsibilities and six people were uh, previously assigned to that. I think the staff told me just a few minutes ago, we have a request for 25 additional staffers for financial services. Uh, we're adding a total of 16 uh, from the 106th Congress. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to justify <laughs> that personnel <coughs> request. I, I see that I mean, you've got good justification in here if you're going to do a lot more field hearings and your travel cost is your biggest uh, item. And uh, certainly there are some in administrative upgrades that need to be done by a number of the committees. Uh, but I, I, I must say I have concerns about uh, a lessening of, uh, of uh, your charter and an increase in staff. And then uh, uh, we get, we're getting hit with a double whammy because we're going to get hit by financial services for a request. I know you have no control over that, but I just wanted to express my concern. Well, Mr. Micah, uh, without my getting into another committee's business, uh, although I understand they got into ours a bit, uh, let me simply say that the, the, the request by the other committee for assistance to do the jurisdiction that was taken from our committee uh, is in fact clearly out of proportion to the resources that were devoted to that subcommittee, which did twice as much work at the Energy Commerce Committee level. That speaks to the other, other committee's request, not to the facts we're presenting you today. The facts we're presenting you today is that this Energy and Commerce Committee of this session will be extraordinarily busier. We'll do much more field hearings, much more travel, much more legislation than perhaps the six years combined of the previous administration of this committee. Uh, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, are charged with producing tw about a dozen of the major priorities defined by the President in the State of the Union address the other night. We have to bring those to you to the floor. Uh, and we're going to do it on time and in good order. Um, for that kind of a workload, uh, we simply uh, not only cannot suffer any loss of personnel or, or, or support, we have to have the assistance of this committee in, in reinvigorating our resources as we have reinvigorated our determination to, to legislate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Additional questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you Appreciate very much. your cooperation. Let's move on quickly. Uh, the bell has rang. Let's move on quickly to the Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, Chairman Smith of New Jersey and Ranking Member Evans of Illinois. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And since there is a, a vote on, I'll be very brief. Uh, first of all, Lane Evans and I, the ranking member, appreciate the opportunity to appear before you. Uh, the VA committee, which I've been on now for 21 years, uh, oversees what continues to be the second largest federal agency in the federal government. We employ over 200,000 people. 
Our budget this year, matter of fact, we'll be making our request to the Budget Committee, will be $53.5 billion. Uh, we oversee 173 hospitals, 551 outpatient clinics, 131 nursing homes, 40 domiciliaries, 115 national cemeteries, 58 regional benefits processing offices, uh, and I can go on and on. But the extent of the benefits and as well as the medical care that's provided by the VA uh, is truly remarkable and very often under heralded. Uh, yesterday we had our first major hearing with the administration. Tony Principi testified. Uh, and both he and I and, and Lane and other members of the committee, matter of fact, this was one of my main uh, arguments I made in asking to be chairman of this committee, is that we need a demonstrable increase in the amount of accountability and oversight that we do on the committee with regards to veterans' funds. While I'm asking for a significant plus-up for this year's budget for an incredible unmet need that is out there, not, I'm not talking about for, from this committee, but for the veterans themselves, uh, there is a lot of money that we don't have a good accounting of, and we will need staff. We're asking uh, to go to the, the um, uh, speaker's limit of 34 staff members uh, one third goes to the mi minority and would be under fully operational control. We share three staffers, or they have full access to three staffers uh, of ours, dealing with uh, finance and and uh, uh, and a few other functions. Uh, the, the reason being that it would be an unwise use of uh, of staff to to have two people doing the same thing. And we are, I think, uh, completely open about that, and, and it works very very well for both majority and minority. Uh, there, are, there are a number of, I mean, give you an example. There's 459,000 claims right now uh, for benefits that, and, and there's about 10,000 being added every week. Uh, Tony Principi said yesterday he wants to get a handle on it. Our committee wants to get a handle on it. We plan a robust uh, series of hearings at the hospitals and out throughout the country uh, in both Democrat and Republican districts. Uh, the point being, we want to make sure that every veteran is adequately served and a vigorous oversight and accountability function is what we need. So 34 uh, people are, are, are what we're asking for. And I could go on and on, but let me yield to my friend. Thank uh, you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, funding request for this Congress is a product of our working together between the majority and minority. It's the committee's request. We urge favorable consideration and approval. The only area that we have uh, not a difference on, but a problem with uh, is that 10 members of the Democratic staff cannot be accommodated in the office space currently alloc allocated. There will be no space for an 11th Democratic staff member provided by the funding request before you. There's no space for fellows or interns or anybody else at this point. So the uh, chairman has worked uh, directly with us. He's sympathetic and indicated his willingness to work with us to find a reasonable sol solution. I appreciate that. And I hope you'll uh, report this favorably to the floor. I just had uh, one question. Uh, of Mr. Evans, if in fact um, we can reach a two-thirds, one-third uh, in every committee, as has been committed uh, by the previous speaker, the current speaker, Mr. Thomas, and myself, Mr. Hoyer, to all achieve that, do you feel there be the votes for the budget on yes. the floor of the House? Yes. Thank you. A second, I just have one comment, uh, and I know we have a vote on it. First of all, I think you have one of the more important committees. We wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for the veterans. Second, I think your request is modest, quite frankly. Modest request. Yeah, let's round them off. <laughs> Thank the you, budget Mr. was Chairman. small to begin but with. It really is. And it is. We're asking for a 537,000 increase. In it's a modest we request. We can fully justify it. And again, oversight has been that one part that has not been emphasized enough, Thank and you. We, we plan on doing it. Thank you. Mr. Hoyt? Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, Mr. Evans and Mr. Smith have been able to work, reach an agreement. Uh, as, as I understand it, uh, we're adding three from 20 to 23. Is that, it was a 2010 before the, the uh, staff yes, slots. Yes. And now we're going to 2311. 2311 is it. Okay. Um, the fact that uh, you have agreement on the administrative slots and the administrative funding uh, gives us a comfort level. Uh, on this committee, Chris, I will tell you that what happens is one-third of all the resources, both slots and dollars, come to the ranking member with sole discretion over those funds. Uh, obviously, that may or may not work, particularly with some expenses like travel where you hold hearings and things of that nature. Uh, and uh, 
I'm pleased to see that the ranking member feels that they're allocated in a, in a fair way. I'm not surprised at that, having worked with you for many years. Uh, but uh, uh, we want to make sure that continues. Uh, as you heard me say, Chairman Ney has been extraordinarily helpful in leading the effort to make sure that uh, we have a fair allocation between majority and minority so that both sides can do their jobs properly. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. 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 Uh, thank you for your time. Let, let me, uh, one question, Chris, and I think I know the answer to this. But in the event, uh, and, and uh, that in light of the chairman's comments, probably won't happen, but in the event we should uh, uh, not be able to fully fund your request, am I correct that the uh, allocation of two-thirds, one-third would remain the same? Yes, the gentleman's correct. Uh, we, we would stand by that. Uh, but thank we look forward, hopefully, to that. Thank you. Very needed uh, increase. Thank you very much. Thank the committee much, will be Mr. in Chairman. recess for uh, 10 minutes. Committee will reconvene. Uh, next up is the Budget Committee. And we have, uh, starting with the Chairman, Mr. Nussel of Iowa, and Ranking Member, Mr. Spratt, South Carolina. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on your new position. I'm learning the ropes over in uh, the Cannon Building myself. We're writing the budget for the whole country, and uh, I know how difficult that is. So I, uh, I commend you on the work that you're doing and uh, appreciate the opportunity to come before you and talk a little bit about the budget for the Budget Committee. Uh, my request uh, reflects a 19 percent increase over the last Congress. Uh, this increase comes on the heels of what is essentially a six-year freeze in our committee's budget. The committee budget has grown. Uh, by only 0.3 percent uh, during the 100 and, uh, or since, I should say, the 104th Congress. And during that same period, the average committee budget in the House climbed a little over 16 percent. We uh, demonstrated that in the form of a little chart that uh, we'll make available to you that shows a little bit about what we're, uh, what we're requesting. Most of the increase that we're requesting, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hoyer, are, uh, reflect uh, an increase in staff. Uh, we're asking for six new slots, uh, four for the majority, two for the minority, uh, to not only keep pace with our Senate counterparts, which is a very important uh, issue when it comes to making sure that the House works its will uh, with regard to the budget process, but also to uh, be able to keep an eye on those appropriators over there. Mr. Hoyer, and uh, also uh, the Ways and Means Committee and uh, other authorizing committees. So I'm uh, specifically requesting an increase in the number of available staff positions uh, distributed between the majority and the minority. Um, I'm also asking for a commensurate increase in the budget for uh, personnel compensation, both to retain and attract uh, personnel in specialized vocational areas and to accommodate additional positions granted to the Budget Committee. Um, I'm also uh, requesting a modest increase in the budget for equipment. Part of this increase would go toward the installation of a multimedia system that was purchased in December of last year as part of our request from a previous uh, Congress. So we're just uh, fulfilling that request or putting that, implementing that request um, from, from a previous uh, Congress as well as uh, uh, enabling us to, uh, uh, to upgrade about one-third of our computers, printers, and other equipment. Uh, we're also having a small increase in travel expenses. The Budget Committee uh, did uh, some traveling during the first 104th Congress. Since then, it has been uh, relatively, uh, uh, has, has, has not traveled, I don't believe, much at all. And so that would be uh, that, would be, uh, that request. Uh, finally, let me uh, make a compliment to, uh, to the Chairman. Uh, and, uh, and, and let me suggest that we have had a fantastic working relationship between our staff directors, uh, Rich Mead and Tom Kahn, uh, while Mr. Spratt and I have been uh, working on Medicare and Social Security and issues such as that, tax cuts and putting the budget together. Uh, these two gentlemen who uh, represent our staffs very ably have done in a bipartisan way an excellent job of putting together this proposal, and I want to compliment them. Uh, we have already achieved in years past, as you may know, 
a, a two-thirds, one-third distribution. Uh, we've also tried to find other ways to assist and accommodate uh, the minority. Uh, in uh, particular, we share administration staff in order to administer computers and things like that so that slots are not wasted uh, by, uh, by the minority for something that we can technically do, but it doesn't interfere with the maybe partisan kinds of things that may, may small p partisan kinds of things that may need to occur. Uh, and, and we're uh, continuing that policy under this, uh, under this budget. So those are our requests. I appreciate the opportunity to come and testify, and I'd be glad to answer questions at the appropriate time. Thank you. <coughs> Chairman, Mr. Poirier, thank you very much for this opportunity. We have an arrangement on the committee which is of long standing, and that is that the majority uh, is allotted two-thirds of the slot and two-thirds of the personnel budget, and we receive one-third. We're agreeable to that, but in the existing situation with the funds we have available, our professional staff are really stretched thin. Stretched thin in the sense that they have to cover lots of subject areas over which it's hard to be an expert, and secondly, stretched thin, particularly in the peak period, such as the one we're going through right now when they have to get uh, documents together in a hurry and out uh, to committee members so that we can proceed with our examination of the budget. For that reason, we badly need two additional professional staff, and I'm very appreciative to the chairman for supporting our request, along with his request for uh, six overall, four on one side, two on the other side. We also have an arrangement of longstanding that's worked well enough, and so I'm not quibbling about it, and that is uh, the chairman and the majority basically control the administrative funds for the administration of the committee, the management of the committee, and we put in our request for uh, equipment and for uh, expenses and things of this nature, and they process the request. That prevents us from having any duplication of personnel who are essentially administrative and not policy making. Now, in addition to that, it's, it's worked uh, reasonably well, and, and we're satisfied with it. We don't think that that should be changed. We could use some uh, additional equipment, and I can make the argument to you very heartily that uh, our particular minority staff ought to get hazardous duty pay for where they work down in the uh, O'Neill building, which won't be with us much longer. And then we've got another problem coming up, which we hope we'll have your help with, and that is finding a place to put the committee staff. But all in all, they do a remarkably good job. There's one thing I think we want on both sides of the aisle when it comes to the budget committee. There's certain things around here where you need some keepers of the memory, the corporate memory of the Congress. We need a staff that is able to recall how it was done in the past and has some perspective, particularly in the budget committee, because that's our job, to maintain an overview of this vast thing called the federal budget. We can't maintain that kind of staff unless we can pay them adequately to get, number one, the expertise that we need to be adept at doing the budget, but also to retain them once they've developed the expertise, once they have learned the budget, to retain them so that the Congress can retain corporate memory. That's why we need some additional money for staff purposes. We need it in particular to hire a professional staff member who has some expertise in taxes. And we would very much appreciate your consideration of it. It'll serve our particular purposes, but I think it'll serve the purposes of the Congress as a whole as well. Thank you. I just have, you know, actually one question, one statement for you. And, you know, John Kasich was chairman of the Budget Committee, and he, of course, he and I shared a county in Ohio, Licking County, and, and he was uh, pretty uh, tight with the, the quest. He flatlined everything, never minded it, except when he wanted to string um, two tin cans and a, and a wire between the offices, and I thought that became a little difficult. Uh -huh. So in memory of John's time here, I just wanted to express that. One question I had, if all committees can come up to the two-thirds, one-third, which was what this committee does, um, do you feel that there would be votes uh, by the um, uh, minority members of the committee for the resolution document for the funding of the committees? Well, our problem is that um, amongst ourselves, we'd like to see the whole budget. We hope the same kind of committee can be extended to uh, Democratic members across the aisle. But certainly, I've <coughs> always supported this budget, except when we've had a particular bone to pick with uh, the majority about uh, shorting one committee or another. When, if there was no issue like that, mm -hmm. I have never been one not to vote for a pay raise or not to vote for the uh, House administration's request for the committee. Thank you. Mr. Hoyt. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would call to the attention, as I have to uh, others who have testified here, the uh, 
particularly to our ranking members, which I've told them in private when we met. Uh, Chairman Ney has been extraordinarily helpful uh, in urging every committee chair. Some didn't need to be urged. Some were already doing it. But to urge those who were not doing it, historically, this committee has done it, uh, to uh, reach the uh, floor of one-third, not a ceiling, but a floor of one-third, a minimum of one-third in slots and resources so that the minority could do its job uh, as well. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Chairman Nussel, uh, as I, my figures here are, are incorrect, and maybe somebody has the, how do you allocate the resources, the dollars? Are they, do you just simply uh, it, assign one-third of the staff salaries, money, to the uh, minority? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'm learning, too. I, I apologize for having That's to it. not know this necessarily right off, right, off, uh, the, uh, right off the cuff. My understanding is, is what we do is exactly as you described, that we, uh, we provide one-third <coughs> of the salary amount so that the minority can make their hiring decisions that way. As I understand it, therefore, the administrative expenses are not split. Am I correct on that? That's right. Now, let me, let me point this out. Uh, in the letter that the uh, ranking members and Dick Army and Tom DeLay and others and Newt Gingrich sent to us in 93, it was one-third of the resources and one-third of the staff. Now, I have not slavishly uh, followed that if the ranking member felt comfortable with the arrangement that was made with the committee. But uh, it does put, frankly, the ranking member in a committee of, in effect, having to ask. And if there were, I don't think this would occur between you and Mr. Spratt, I understand that. But if there were the occasion where there might be some disagreement or inability to sort of come together and have comedy, the ranking member would be put in a very tough position in terms of their own administrative expenses. Let me, let me refer to one specifically. You have a substantial request in here for uh, technology uh, enhancements. Uh, that is in totally under your control, as I understand the way you've submitted the budget. Mr. Spratt, I presume, has needs as well in terms of computers and POM and other, uh, other information technology equipment that is necessary. Uh, on our committee, Tell you. What happens is we take one third of the resources and one third of the slots. And Mr. Thomas gave that to the minority, and that was the minorities to, to spend as they saw fit to meet the needs of uh, their responsibility. Uh, that is not the case in your committee. So that the way we computed it effectively, uh, the ranking members getting about 30 percent of the uh, resources while getting a third of the slots. Now, that may not be exactly correct, because I, I, I think my figures here are incorrect. My point being this. Mr. Spratt, as the ranking member, believes that the arrangement that you and he have reached is an arrangement that can work. But I would urge you, so notwithstanding Mr. Spratt's uh, being very accommodating, to look at making sure that least up to one-third, that there are no question but that Mr. Spratt has the ability to, to spend those sums. And, that, and that's the way, that's, that has been the practice of the committee, and that's the way I intend to. And part of my theory here, uh, Mr. Hoyer, is that I never quite know when I might be uh, in Mr. Spratt's chair, uh, and I want to make sure that that fairness is extended to me. So I think it's the do unto others as you would have them do unto you, do unto you uh, principle here. But I understand your your concern that if that comedy would be, uh, would for some reason lapse, uh, that that would be concerning. And I, I am willing to figure out whatever accommodation we need to do to, to do that. But that has been the practice. That's my intention. That's the commitment I make to you and the chairman. And, and that's how I, I wish to that. proceed. And let me say, uh, <clears throat> obviously, on our side of the aisle, we hope that uh, Mr. Spratt's in the chair's chair sooner than later. But uh, I will tell you this. I believe that if that occurs and the Democrats are back in the majority, I think we will be a more sensitive majority. I think we did not do things uh, as uh, well as we should have 
in terms of allocation of resources and uh, other things that you learn in the minority. You know, you, and I'm, I'm not sure I always understood the anger that some sometimes manifested itself in the minority. And as Mr. Ney knows, both Mr. Gephardt and I have said that if we retake the majority, that we will, every committee will follow the one-third, two-thirds uh, minimum rule, and that the minority will have one-third of the resources uh, available uh, to them at their discretion to represent their, their side of the aisle. So that uh, you're right. I mean, if, we, if we're asking for this, uh, we need to be in a position to pledge that we will also follow that same rule, and we make that pledge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, oh, let me, on a, on a sort of non-related, but you mentioned the, the appropriators. <laughs> so I'm going to go off budget a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. One of the serious problems we have had over the last four or five years, with the exception of 97, really, when we got together and had a bipartisan agreement, from an appropriator's standpoint, was that the documents that came out of the Budget Committee were not real. And 90 percent of the Congress knew they were not real, and 100 percent of the country knew they were not real. As a result, we appropriators went through uh, what I perceive to be a charade for months and months and months until we got to late September and October. The consequences of that were that essentially we forgot about the budget resolution and we had, we, we lacked the discipline of the budget resolution's gross numbers as opposed to the division among subcommittees. That was a serious problem, I think, and uh, I would hope that we would uh, not uh, have that occur again. I know the President wants to cut funds. Ronald Reagan wanted to cut funds. Uh, I think a lot of people in the Congress want to cut funds. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not adverse to cutting some places. But we ought to be realistic and real in our budget so that we, we operate uh, with a budget that we all think is real, even if we don't all agree with it. And I saw you shaking your head that you agreed with me, but I, for instance, on the Labor Health Committee, on which I serve, neither John Porter nor David Obey, the chair and the ranking members, thought it was a document that would ever set the numbers of that bill. As a consequence, we played games for essentially seven months. That was not to the best interest of the Congress as an institution, not the best interest of uh, the uh, items in the budget, uh, in the labor health budget, and not in the best interest of our country, I think. And hopefully we would not go through that preliminary political posturing game uh, uh, this year and in years to come. Uh, Mr. Hoyer, you have always been uh, very straightforward when it comes to these matters. I, I've observed that in, in debates and watching, watching the way you handle yourself and, and the appropriations process. Uh, I, I totally agree and associate myself with your comments this year. Uh, it is my intention to present a real budget now. Your and my definition of real might be slightly different, and I agree we will that. have that debate and discussion, and a majority will make that decision. But if a majority does, in fact, make that decision, then the same majority should then enforce that decision. And uh, that discipline needs to be there at the front end as well as the back end. And I, I commit to you that that is the process that I intend to go through. Otherwise, uh, there really may not be a reason to have a budget committee. Then, then the. Uh, different political committees are doing the real work. We're putting up a platform, a document that's political and not a document that is for planning. Uh, we're, asking, uh, we're asking the Congress and the country to think in terms of what the next 10 years may look like in a number of different areas. And to be a planning committee, uh, we need to, just to put it back in the context that we're here today to discuss, uh, both Mr. Spratt and I need the kind of people who can, who can do that, who can not just work from the here and now, but also look into the future and be very analytical about the issues that confront us as a nation. And, uh, and so we ask that you consider that in, in the request that we've put forward. But I, I associate myself with your comments, and I hope that at the end of the day, regardless of whether we agree on every single item, you will come to me and we'll have a discussion, and you'll say, well, I may not have agreed with it, but at least it's real, it adds up, and uh, it's your view of the world, but it's going to be enforced. And, and uh, I hope that happens. One last brief comment. A number of us, of us are very legitimately concerned 
Uh, Mr. Stenholm, in my opinion, is one of the most honest members of the House of Representatives, highest intellectual integrity of any member of this House, in my opinion. He, he takes his position. He will be uh, articulating. I share his view. I think Mr. Spratt does it well, that the budget document in 1974 was meant to be, as you've just pointed out, a map, a plan, uh, a commitment as to where we're going. A number of us have great concern that we are doing the tax bill, as you know, prior to us adopting a plan and knowing what you determine as a committee are our needs in terms of what revenues we need. And I think that is a very legitimate point of view that from a budget committee's standpoint would be important as well. You don't need to respond to that, but, I, but we're going to be debating that pretty heavily, certainly tomorrow. Uh, but it is a very, I think, uh, heartfelt position, not political decision. Uh, obviously, there would be political ramifications of it, but uh, in terms of, of, of making sure that we do things that, again, make sense and can be carried out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any further questions? I want to thank both of you for your uh, cooperation. Thank you very committee. much. Thank, thank you very you. much. <clears throat> Next, we move on to the Committee on Armed Services. Um, Mr. Stump of Arizona, Chairman, and Mr. Skelton of Missouri, Ranking uh, Member. Thank you, and uh, we'll begin with uh, Chairman Stump. Thank you. Are you ready for us to start, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, Congressman Hoyer, it's a pleasure for us to appear before you today to present our Armed Services Committee request for the 107th, uh, accompanied, of course, by my very good friend uh, and ranking member, Mr. Skelton. I know you have this statement before you, and I've probably reviewed it, and with your permission, I'm just going to hit only the highlights, maybe try to help you catch up on a little time. Our budget request for the 107th is approximately $10.8 million, 5.2 for 2001 and 5.7 for 2002 or a 4.9% increase uh, over the 106, which I think is by far the lowest of any standing committee in, that, in our request. The majority of these requests, of course, come in the area of salaries, COLAs, cost of living, and salary adjustments that need to be made. Uh, as you know, the Armed Services Committee operates with essentially a nonpartisan staff, uh, which Mr. Skelton remains control over eight slots, and it's my intention, and I've already committed to him, to increase that to nine. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is one matter that I would like to stress today, and, and that is uh, because of our continued growth, the size of the committee, which I have objected to year after year, we have two subcommittee rooms that will not accommodate the size of our committees. There will have to be some modifications made, and we've been told that our request for modification to fix this problem is in the 2002 budget. Uh, in the Architects 2002 budget, I might add. However, with the approval of your committee, we have obligated 2,000 funds uh, for the necessary modifications and have asked the Architects Office to select a vendor and coordinate this work. We ask your support and assistance uh, with the Architect. Congressman Longevin from Rhode Island, as you may or may not know, is confined to a wheelchair. And uh, we've made uh, every effort we can to accommodate his needs uh, but there will have to be some modifications made, and uh, if, with your help, and uh, it will be extremely helpful that we could go ahead and get this, uh, this accomplished. Mr. Chairman, that's all, and I would yield to my uh, ranking member and stand by to answer any questions you thank may you. have. Mr. Skelton, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. I uh, wholly and 100% uh, uh, endorse uh, what uh, Chairman Stump uh, has requested. Uh, actually, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hoyer, I, I think you have a real bargain in the uh, request today. The uh, Armed Services Committee controls about 50 percent of all discretionary funds in the, uh, in the Congress, and we are asking for only 4.9 percent increase. We will have uh, only 59, as I understand it, uh, in, in employees, uh, we work on a 
nonpartisan, bipartisan basis that really does work in truth. In fact, uh, there's some 30, I hope I have the figures correct, 30 nonpartisan professional members uh, that are at the beck and call of, of every member of our, and of course they're assigned to various subcommittees, but at the beck and call of uh, both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, Mr. Stump controls 16. In addition there to I control eight, and as he mentioned, he's kind enough to give us one more, so we will have nine uh, that I, I will control. Um, I compliment him on uh, wanting to move forward with uh, revamping the uh, subcommittee rooms. Uh, frankly, it has to be done. I hope you'll look at that very carefully. Um, this is really a, a very modest and, uh, and workable uh, request, and I hope you will give it to us. We, there's no gilding the lily uh, at all. It's a, uh, it, it's a request that is uh, very sincere. And um, I might say, regarding the staff that I control, Mr. Stump uh, treats us very fairly with the, uh, regarding equipment or pay or the cost of living adjustments. So we really, frankly, have no complaint. I, I wholeheartedly endorse Mr. Stump's recommendation. I just want to um, really make a statement. First, I want to thank both of you for coming here today and also the tremendous cooperation that you both uh, have uh, with each other in order to uh, run, I think, one of the most important committees, Armed Services, Veterans. I, I said that when the Veterans Committee testified. So I appreciate uh, the support and cooperation. Also, I just wanted to state I had served on Veterans Committee. It was a, a, a pleasurable experience. Uh, Mr. Stump chaired it and uh, just did a great job. Also, what you say out front, in front of the cameras, is what you say behind the door in being nonpartisan and uh, because not a partisan issue. You've always kept to that. I appreciate it, and I learned a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, do, do I need to ask uh, permission to put my statement in, in the record? Without objection. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think Armed Services is, is one of the committees that proves the rule, if you will. Uh, the committee has historically had a very bipartisan working relationship between members on both sides of the aisle. And the staff has been very much perceived by both sides of the aisle as a professional staff, the 30 to which uh, Mr. Skelton referred. Uh, and uh, from the very beginning of our discussions regarding this, uh, Mr. Skelton uh, indicated, look, I'll support the others, but I want to make it very clear that we have no problem in our committee and we, we're working together very well. You can't really apply the one-third two-thirds here, although I know we have the, I see the 16 and 8 does essentially, although we're getting a little more than the third and the 16 9 from that standpoint, but we really can't apply the rule here because they operate differently, and I think this is a, a proof of the fact that none of us are slavishly imposing some sort of arbitrary uh, rule, and where the minority and the, the majority can work together in a way that's constructive for both. Uh, certainly this committee ought to support that, and I know that uh, I, I do uh, as well. And uh, the last thing I wanted to say, uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate you bringing up uh, Mr. Langevin. Uh, as, as the sponsor of the Americans with Disabilities Act that we passed in 1990, uh, obviously we asked everybody to make reasonable accommodations so that persons with a, a disability, in this case Mr. Langevin, as you know, uh, I don't know whether Bob, uh, you and Jack know that uh, Jim Langevin was on a police corps training program as a young man, 16 years of age, was in a local police station. One of the police officers was cleaning their gun. It went off, it was a new gun, went off, and a ricochet uh, hit him uh, in the back and disabled him from that point on. He's shown extraordinary courage, uh, went on, went to school, graduated from college, uh, elected to the legislature, and was elected Secretary of State statewide in Rhode Island, and now comes here as a new member of Congress. Uh, the architect's office, the speaker's office, and others have been very helpful in making sure that we accommodated uh, his uh, uh, necessity to get around in a wheelchair. Obviously, as we redesign these rooms, we need to make uh, that accommodation, and I know that Mr. Ney and I, uh, Mr. Chairman, will strongly support whatever is necessary to accomplish those objectives. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any additional? Uh, Mr. Linder? Did, did you say that um, the architect's budget has 
the reforms in for 2002? For 2002, yes. And have you negotiated with them to try and move it ahead because of this? Have you ne negotiated with them to try and move it into 2001 because of the special needs you have? Yes, sir. It's are in, they, are, we have obligated in the 2000 year budget to take care of it if we get the permission of this committee and with the architect's support. Um, you did not spend any money for consultants last year. No, sir. What do you anticipate needing them for this year? I, no, not necessarily, uh, Ms. Linder, but uh, it helps to be prepared. What percentage of your budget goes to oversight? Uh, that I'll have to turn to staff for. Uh, Mr. Linder, we don't break that down. We do oversight as it relates to each subcommittee. We have five subcommittees. We don't are you going to stay with five? Or are you going to stay with five subcommittees, or are you going to try and add one? No, we have five. You have five. And you're satisfied you can do sufficient oversight within this budget? Yes, uh, because I think if, uh, and I know we could increase the size of subcommittees, which I don't want to do if we had an oversight, but I think when you have an oversight committee, and given the nature of our work, where we have highly specialized <coughs> people there, uh, the tendency would be to this oversight committee, I think, to get into everybody else's business, and I don't think that works uh, for the best of the cause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, your time before the committee today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the committee on rules. Uh, I might say to the chairman as he leaves that he's fortunate to have somebody like Ike Skelton as the ranking member. Who's, he's fortunate to have Ike Skelton as the ranking member. He's a. He knows that. Uh, he knows that, huh? <laughs> We have Mr. Dreyer of uh, California, the chairman, and Mr. Moakley of uh, Massachusetts, the ranking member. I want to welcome both gentlemen today, and we'll begin with uh, Chairman Dreyer. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me say what a uh, great honor it is to be here, and I'm particularly honored that you have very, two very distinguished members of the uh, Committee on Rules, uh, Messrs. Linder and Reynolds, who are serving with, I know, great distinction uh, on the Administration Committee. and and. Uh, Mr. Hoyer serves with reasonable distinction on this committee as well, <laughs> even though he doesn't have service on the on the Rules Committee. They cut the money, cut out of his side. Well, it's done. Right, I got to. <laughs> well, um, I'd, I'd say you're I making a good you start that, for your though, budget. You, uh, <laughs> let me uh, let me say uh, thanks to uh, to you for the consideration of our bipartisan uh, budget uh, request. It was developed in close consultation with uh, my friend Mr. Moakley, the distinguished ranking member, and and. Uh, it was adopted by a voice vote in our committee on the 13th of February. The Rules Committee intends to continue with a long-standing arrangement of dedicating a third of the committee's personnel budget to the minority while granting all other requests in a timely manner. Uh, we uh, have uh, done so, of course, subject to the availability of funds that have been allocated to the committee. In the two years uh, that I've been privileged to serve as chairman of the committee, the minority has been granted every single request that they've made and that doesn't include the requests that they make on rules, of course, but every request <laughs> that they've made uh, to us uh, concerning uh, the budget, whether it's equipment, subscriptions, or supplies, and uh, it's my expectation that the 107th Congress will be no different than that. We'll continue to operate within the constraints of our existing staff ceiling of 36, with 24 allocated to the majority and 11 allocated to the minority, with one shared administrative employee who's paid out of the majority uh, staff's uh, allocation. Uh, the Rules Committee is asking for a very modest 2.5% and 3.1% for 2001 and 2002, respectively. These increases will be incurred by uh, personnel compensation and are necessary to keep experienced staff from fleeing the hill to jobs in the private sector or in the new administration. It's also necessary to ensure that the minority has sufficient funds within their one-third allocation <coughs> to provide uh, the cost of living increases over the next couple of years. And Mr. Moakley uh, has, I should say, uh, a team of very extremely loyal, dedicated, hardworking, and experienced staff members. And uh, I want to do my doggone this, as I know you do, to make sure that they're compensated adequately. Thanks to the support of the uh, House Administration Committee for our previous funding request, the Rules Committee has done well in upgrading its office equipment and will continue to do so in this Congress. Our biggest priorities include the purchase of a high-speed, high-capacity photocopier so that when we're presented with several hundred page bills and conference reports late at night, which is Mr. Moakley's preferred time of meeting. We have the uh, ability to provide this material to our members prior to our meeting. And second, modernizing the equipment of our subcommittee office, which currently has uh, very antiquated equipment that uh, is, uh, dates back to the early part of the last decade. 
With respect to the distribution of our budget request, I can't guarantee that the minority will be provided exactly 33 percent of the funds allocated to us, but I would point out that during the 106th Congress, the minority was accountable for 33 percent of the money allocated uh, to the Rules Committee and 34 percent uh, of the money actually spent by the committee. I believe that this is a, a fair and responsible budget, Mr. Chairman, uh, and it does continue again with uh, that one-third of the resources for the minority. And I want to uh, express great appreciation to uh, my friend, Mr. Moakley. Uh, I enjoy working closely with him. And uh, while well, he's clearly going to be here through uh, this Congress, he's chosen to announce his retirement at the uh, end of the 107th Congress. And so uh, I will say that uh, it's been a privilege for me to sit at this table with him and make these requests with you. And, and uh, I hope that he will, uh, I hope very much with everything that I've said, that he might say something supportive of the uh, budget that I've just requested of you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mugler. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Hoyer, members of the committee, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here this afternoon with my dear friend, my chairman, David Dreyer, to present to you our budget request for the Committee on Rules. I know that you've heard from almost every other committee, so I won't take up much of your time. Our chairman has made a very thorough presentation, which I agree. I only want to touch upon a few items. As you know, Mr. Chairman, the Rules Committee is one of the most partisan committees in the House. We might lead the House in the number of battles we have, but I think we also lead the, number, the House in the number of jokes per meeting. Mm -hmm. I think this committee is a proof of the old adage that just because we disagree, we don't have to be disagreeable. Nowhere, I think, is that more evident than when it comes to the administration of the committee. That being said, I'm sure that my chairman is not the only chairman facing increased salary demands as the new administration gets into place. In fact, I know that David has lost several of his key staff to the administration, and competition for the qualified re replacements is going to be stiff. On my side of the equation, I don't have a turnover issue. In fact, my staff is just the opposite. The professional staff that I've been able to assemble has been together since 1989, uh, when I first became chairman. But, Mr. Chairman, in order to keep these people from being lured into the private sector, are the administration, we need to be competitive. The budget proposal allows us to do that. Mr. Chairman, I would add that Chairman Dreyer has done a marvelous job on the commi committee website. I would encourage all members to look at it. In my mind, it is what a committee website should be, factual, educational. In fact, Mr. Chairman, we in the minority have no need to request a, a minority page my hope that this will continue in the future. But let me conclude by, uh, now, before I conclude, uh, I must say the practice of committing one-third of the salary dollars to the minority when we're in the control had, has held us in good stead since 1994. Jerry Solomon and now David Dreyer have continued the practice of nonpartisan uh, administration of the committee and have provided us with almost one-third of the committee slots and one-third of the dollar necessary to, to fund these slots. This Congress, David and I are requesting just a modest increase just to address salary issues. As you know, the overwhelming percentage of our budget goes to staff salaries. And as David said, and I agree, I think we've got one of the most dedicated staffs in the House. They have specialized knowledge that's built up over the years, and we need to do our best to keep these people working in the House. But let me conclude by reiterating that we on the Democratic side of the Rules Committee are very supportive of the request of the Chairman, and I present to you this afternoon on, and uh, that uh, the, the Chairman and I present to you this afternoon, and I'm prepared to answer any questions that the Chair or the, Mr. Hoyer or anybody else in the committee may have. appreciate the working relationship that uh, both of you have. You have an important uh, committee. It's tough, but we make it happen. Mr. Hoyer. Well, Joe Moakley is a very easy guy to get along with. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're halfway there, huh? Yeah, he's <laughs> an easy guy to get along with, Jenny. Yeah. Um, I think this budget uh, reflects uh, what we want to see, and that is a, an, an agreement with respect and, uh, and consideration between the uh, chair and the ranking member. And I, I think that it is a modest request. Obviously, the Rules Committee, one of the most critical committees in the House. and. Uh, it is also a, a, a committee which is confronted with contention all the time. 
it is a testimony to the people on the committee that it does not become itself contentious, but allows the issues to be uh, the focus and not the personalities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, uh, the largest percentage increase is for administrative expenses, although I see that's not very high in its total outstanding expenditures. Is that the joint employee, or what is that category? Well, we have I think the you spent 46 I think you spent $47,000 on it last year. We have a, 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 a joint employee who handles all of the administrative overhead, and that actually provides an opportunity for the minority to really even go beyond uh, what we've uh, stated. So I, I think that they're that, That's what the category is, is a joint right. employee you have. Mm -hmm. um, having served on the Rules Committee for six years, I didn't know that it took trips. And it looks like you're planning three trips. Where, where does the Rules Committee Go. Well, as you know, the Rules Committee has jurisdiction over uh, virtually uh, everything with the exception of bills that we decide to bring up under suspension of the rules, which require a two-thirds vote, or appropriations work when a waiver is not required and all but save one have required waivers. So we have jurisdiction over a wide range of things. The Rules Committee is going to be, uh, because of the interest uh, that I have and a number of my other colleagues on the committee have in Asia, we're going to... Uh, be in the in the coming weeks. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the situation in Japan and uh, in China, uh, and so there are. I, I I remember when I was first on the committee, Mr. Mokley had a particular interest, as did I, on in Central America, and uh, I had the privilege of serving on his commission uh, in Central America. And I happen to be one of those who's a strong proponent of congressional travel, believing that members of Congress need to get uh, outside of our nation's borders as we deal with this global economy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I, I didn't know anything about the trips. The only trips I had taken as chairman of the Rules Committee was the men's room across the hall. <laughs> so I mean, I'm very happy that the chairman is now opening up this vista a little wider. <laughs> Any further questions? I want to thank both of you for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And we'll, uh, we are waiting for Mr. Rangel and Mr. Thomas, so we'll just stand uh, in recess for about uh, three to four minutes. You don't want to miss Mr. Thomas, do you? Of course not. recess and welcome the chairman of uh, Ways and Means, Mr. Thomas. Uh, thank you, chairman. I'm, uh, excuse me, Bill, is, is Mr. Rangel on his way? Yeah, he's, yes. he's, uh, he's on his way, although um, he empowered me to deliver his testimony if necessary. <laughs> Actually, I believe he said you could uh, testify uh, on behalf of the way we deal with the uh, committee budgeting. I, I, I told him. Tell a gentleman from uh, Maryland. I told him if he got the, if he got the deal from uh, you that I got, he'd be fully satisfied. Well, I assume this won't take long if this is basically flatlined as House Admin was. So I. Uh, yes, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's not only uh, flatlined; uh, it is less than uh, what occurred in the 103rd Congress. Um, I have a number of uh, points that are made in the written statement at ask unanimous consent that be uh, submitted for the Thank record. Um, uh, and I don't wish to deal in any negative comparisons with other committees and the efforts that they might have uh, before us. I would um, simply point out the obvious, and that is the Ways and Means Committee will be dealing with the President's tax package. We're all concerned about Medicare modernizing it uh, uh, and including prescription drugs. Uh, the President, in his uh, uh, joint budget address, focused on the need to uh, begin to rethink the Social Security um, system uh, and especially what we're doing with uh, uh, maintaining benefits for uh, current and uh, near retirees, uh, but making sure that the young people believe they have a system available for themselves. And I just finished, the Ways and Means Committee just finished with a hearing with the new United States Trade uh, ambassador, um, uh, ambassador uh, Zelig, 
And of course, trade is also on the uh, agenda of the Ways and Means Committee. So from um, uh, a substantive point of view, uh, we have a significant number of issues that we need to deal with. And notwithstanding decisions of uh, previous chairmen, uh, I do think uh, that it's fairly um, interesting to note uh, that the request uh, that this committee is making for the 107th Congress is uh, $250,000 less than was actually provided uh, to uh, the uh, committee uh, uh, in the 103rd Congress. As far as staff is concerned, it's more than 50 fewer uh, than were available. Uh, our goal, uh, we believe, is a modest increase, both in terms of uh, overall funds uh, and um, staff. Um, to believe that we're actually engaged in the activities that I just reviewed with 68 staff uh, is, I think, a clear indication that we're not profligate and we don't waste money. We just need a few more people because we're going to be engaged in all of these issues simultaneously. That stretches us a little thinner than uh, we otherwise uh, believe uh, will be necessary to do the people's work. I tell the gentleman from Maryland that I offered uh, my uh, ranking member the same deal, and that is when I was in the minority, I spoke long and hard about the fact that there ought to be a two-thirds, one-third split of all resources, not just staff. Uh, however, uh, if other uh, chairman and ranking members work out agreements which are satisfactory to them, it's important that we're on the same page in terms of the resources available to us. Uh, but my commitment uh, to you uh, and to the gentleman uh, from New York was that we would honor a two-thirds, one-third split. We have a couple of wrinkles that we need to unravel because of the previous structure, uh, but I'm fully confident, and I hope my colleague is, uh, that that will be resolved as we go forward. So I'm here to ask you um, that uh, our request, although it may seem a significant amount of money, I've discovered relatively, based upon what other committees have asked for, uh, that uh, uh, it seems perfectly reasonable. Um, uh, I know you have a difficult job. Uh, uh, I sat there for a long time, both in the minority and the majority. Uh, the evidence is in front of you. I believe the substantive work of the committee uh, is fairly self-evident. We believe the resources we asked for uh, uh, will be adequate to do the job. I don't play the game of asking for more than I expect to get and then negotiate down. We analyzed what we needed on a fair two-thirds, one-third split. We scrubbed our budget uh, and we submitted it. Uh, I know you have a difficult job. Uh, I hope you find our argument persuasive and you support us and with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Rangel. Mr. Chairman, I'm here to uh, support my chairman uh, long before he became the chairman of our <coughs> Ways and Means Committee. Uh, his fairness on this issue was uh, shared with me by uh, Mr. Hoyer. And uh, even though I'm one of the few that don't believe one-third is enough, considering the history of the differences between majority and minority, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, I think that Mr. Thomas has gone a long way, not only with our committee, but certainly in the House, in trying to create an atmosphere of, uh, of equity and fair play. Certainly, as it relates to the <coughs> Ways and Means Committee, we didn't have to negotiate. We didn't have to twist storms. Uh, uh, we moved on from day one, and, uh, and I'm here to support that effort. There was some discussion as to whether we as Democrats could uh, prevail upon the entire House to try and recognize and the different committees have different problems. Uh, I am so pleased to hear that many of the problems that I shared with Chairman Thomas that related to other committees uh, have been resolved. And I have every reason to believe that the one minor problem that exists is in the process of now uh, to being resolved. Uh, that being the case, I not only support my chairman here, but I'd be glad to provide the leadership on the floor to put this one behind this and to try to set or create rather an atmosphere that perhaps on legislative matters at least we can discuss those and discuss our differences uh, on a legislative way rather than just uh, our ability to have staff and to get the resources that are necessary to make sound decisions. And I want to thank you for this opportunity. 
Thank you. You actually answered my question. I just wanted to uh, make a, a comment. You have an important <coughs> task on the committee. I think both of you appreciate your uh, cooperation and working together. Also, uh, I watched uh, Mr. Thomas when he was chairman of this committee, what he said uh, publicly about reaching the two-thirds, one-third, and I saw what he said privately, which was the same thing he said in public. And uh, that set a tone, I think, that is healthy and good for the institution. We are continuing on that and working uh, with Mr. Hoyer and the staffs. And I just appreciate the working relationship we've had on this uh, issue. It needs to be done, and we want to work uh, towards that. So I, it makes it easier when, when the members cooperate. I appreciate your cooperation. One issue I did want to mention, this is the first time I've actually mentioned a particular issue in a committee, but I, uh, as you talked about trade and the fact of you're looking into, uh, you know, ha having the staffing levels to look into trade, I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, this situation of illegal steel dumping uh, is large. Uh, it is important. Uh, we have 14 uh, companies in bankruptcy. I believe that, uh, you know, we don't need to close our borders, but I think when it comes to illegal dumping, it is illegal, and it's a different scenario. I just hope in the, in the course of the consideration of the committee, as we did previously a couple of years ago, uh, that, uh, you know, we in fact uh, will be able to continue to uh, get our ideas out there. I've already found that with Mr. Thomas, more than willing to listen. And so I just wanted to put the, that, uh, you know, issue out there on the Might floor. I respond, yes. Mr. Chairman? I tell you that um, uh, I appreciate your concern about a specific subject matter in front of us. And although uh, our, our staff is stretched very thin, um, we'll be able to uh, deal directly with that problem, in large part depending upon the decision that this committee makes. Uh, in terms of the staffing and the resources available to us, doesn't sound un doesn't sound unpleasant to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as I have told Mr. Rangel, uh, uh, the chairman of this committee uh, established the predicate for commitment to a f floor of, of one third. Uh, in the correspondence that was sent in '93, uh, I think correctly, although we didn't respond as quickly as we could have, uh, there was the premise that if you're going to have bipartisanship in terms of administration and working together, not on the issues, on the issues obviously we'll, have, we'll, we'll take partisan positions and take positions that uh, members be believe are the best for the country and for their constituents. But on the administrative side, we ought to work together in a way that uh, allows both the majority and minority to carry out its responsibility. Uh, Mr. Thomas, as I have said uh, for many times when he was here and uh, during the course of these hearings, has set the predicate, and I think this year we'll accomplish uh, the objective that he had set out. And I want to say to him that uh, Mr. Ney has been a very worthy successor and has been working very hard towards that objective uh, with the support of Speaker Hastert. Uh, it is obviously the premise of the 1993 letter that that would establish a, a, a degree of comedy that would provide a better working relationship in the committees and in the Congress. I think that premise was correct, and to the extent we accomplished that, while we'll still have great differences on issues, we, we can have a respect for one another's uh, ability to do their job uh, properly. So I appreciate uh, Mr. Thomas's leadership as chair of this committee and his adherence to that principle uh, in his new role as chairman of one of the most, uh, if not, uh, well, I, I'm not going to say one, of, certainly one of the most important. As a member of the Appropriations Committee, I, you know, you'll, you'll give me the uh, latitude to reserve uh, somewhat that one of the most important committees in this Congress, uh, if not the most important committee. Uh, you also have a heavy workload in terms of the President's proposals, many of which I won't agree with, but nevertheless, they deserve careful consideration, and you need the staff to do that. Although, uh, if I could jocularly, without Bill getting you, <laughs> give me a long response, that you might not need as many staff on your committee if we considered the tax bill like we considering the one that's going to be on the floor tomorrow, because we had no hearings and uh, no witnesses, and probably the staff wasn't put to great stress <laughs> in, in, in having the hearings. But I say that jocularly because your responsibility is great, your needs are great, and uh, we certainly want to see you have the ability to do the job that you need to do. Could I respond not on that, <laughs> not on okay. that point, okay. not on that point, because right. you, 
Yes, parenthetically made it jocular. Um, and, and this is, and I thank you very much for your kind comments, but it's a continuation in trying to get this place run in, in a professional way in all regards. And the gentleman mentioned that he's on the Appropriations Committee. And the gentleman well knows that every other committee of the House, including the Budget Committee, submits itself to this process, with the exception of one committee, and that is the Appropriations Committee. Uh, and now that we've reached the two-thirds, one-third goal on those committees that actually submit themselves to this budget review process, uh, I would hope that the gentleman from Maryland would carry back to his committee which chooses not to submit itself to this process, that as the last holdout, that they would consider submitting themselves to this process rather than having their ability to write their own budget and pass it on the floor. I believe in terms of comity and working together of all committees, all committees submitted to this process, uh, I think would create a better working environment, uh, lowering tensions and concerns between committees, regardless of which party is in the majority. And uh, I'd love to see that as the next goal of this committee, to have this process uh, 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 placed in a situation in which every committee of the House goes through this process. I, I say to the gentleman, I'll certainly pursue that on a bipartisan basis with Chairman Young. Thank you, gentlemen. My comments were not jocular. Oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Linder? Uh, Thank you. Okay, let me just oh, ask a couple please. questions. Sure. Um, what is the equipment budget? The three hundred ninety thousand dollars you're looking for. Uh, I tell the gentleman that uh, we considered uh, placing some uh, items that, as other committee uh, uh, did uh, oh, in the equipment budget, dealing with the restructuring of the Ways and Means Room itself. But we decided not to do that. Uh, there has been for some time a dearth of equipment available for individuals to do their work. Uh, we do not have. Uh, for example, cellular telephones available uh, for members, uh, to, uh, uh, for staff to be able to use for communications, which we all know has become almost a commonplace uh, office uh, tool. Uh, in addition to that, uh, members do not have the ability to take computers uh, with them, uh, nor are they interconnected uh, with uh, their offices to be able to work late at night or early in the morning, sometimes on timelines that uh, are essential. Uh, we've discovered that in terms of a modern office uh, and uh, providing our staff with tools that are necessary, uh, we have to gear up a bit from where you might expect a committee of this stature to be. And that's the purpose of the size of the equipment. Uh, has your committee budget. room been upgraded for technology like some others have? It has not. Uh, and uh, I have some concern about that because um, the Sergeant at Arms uh, and uh, the architect of the Capitol has focused on the Ways and Means Room, since it is the largest hearing room uh, on the House side, as a fallback uh, for the floor of the House. And frankly, the quality, uh, the failure to have a digital capability uh, in the committee uh, puts us in a secondary position. I was very responsive uh, when I was the chair for those committees that dealt with, for example, especially international relations and the uh, need for uh, simultaneous translators in a number of the activities that they carry on, uh, clearly the Science Committee and others because of uh, their need to be cutting edge. Uh, but I'm very concerned about the quality uh, and the capability of the Ways and Means Room uh, given that fallback uh, aspect of the committee. And I'll be working uh, with all resources to try to figure out a way in which uh, we can expeditiously uh, upgrade not only the audio, uh, but also the transmission capability of 1100 Longworth. I just want to close by saying I'm pleased to see that you're prepared to take this committee in field trips. I don't think we've been doing enough of that lately, and your request for budget on that is, uh, is welcome to see. Well, again, this is an area that where we're doing uh, a new construction uh, as opposed to adding on. If we are, in fact, the people's house, and we're going to be dealing with those issues that we talked about, especially in terms of Medicare modernization with prescription drugs and Social Security reform, then the people's house ought to take those issues to the people. And you can only do that with fairly comprehensive uh, field trips. Uh, and we're excited about doing so, by the way. Thank you. And I thank the gentleman for observing that. Any other questions? 
Um, thank you for your uh, time here at the committee. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I just uh, want to offer my commiserations as you go through this process. Uh, very few people know what you have to do and the difficulty of doing it. I just uh, uh, will leave you, notwithstanding uh, my offer to trade, uh, w with the thought that whatever you do, I know it will be your best effort and the best interests of the House uh, are placed first. Uh, it is just an extremely difficult process, and I want to thank you now that I'm no longer responsible for that, mm -hmm. for your willingness uh, to do it. It is a service to the House, uh, and I want to thank you for doing thank it. Thank you. And I, as you know, I requested six years ago to be on this committee. I learned a lot from it, and uh, it was a good experience. See what happens? Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. I ask unanimous for consent that the members be allowed to submit their statements for the record and for those statements to be entered into the appropriate place in the record. Without objection, the material be so entered. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make technical and conforming changes on all matters considered by the committee at today's portion of the hearing. Without objection, so ordered. Having completed our business for the day and for this hearing on the committee funding, the committee is hereby adjourned. Here's a look at the morning schedule on C-SPAN 2. Next, FBI Director Louis Free 